What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to How to Trade, formerly known as the Midday Show. That right there is your girl, Adara, and I'm Sharif. And as we typically do, we wait for everyone to migrate on over from the other stream because it takes a little bit. We already have Jay Zach. What's up, Jay Zach? Shout out to you, my man. And we even have Adara, believe it or not, in the chat dropping hot lines. We got Pillsbury, baby. Uh, we already have Bears versus Bulls. Shout out to the world's greatest moderator. There we go. JC Finance, Wrath Kid. We got Wrath Kid. We got Pitchbull. I already, no, that was Pillsbury. Pitchbull. We got B Davis, baby. Hamptons Trader, Gaddy RS, Juan Padilla, TX Trader. We got Brad Gobber, Zach Frack. We got Anurag, Imad, Anuview. We got Scott H. And then the chat's moving too quick. Apple and Raisin Pancake with Powdered Sugar. I love Fantastic. That That's a very good name. Uh, we have Diamond Realty of Miami, baby. One of the OGs of the chat. We DJ Marshall. We got Zach Griffith. We even have Ram Ram who's like spamming the chat already. I love <laughs> it. Uh, we have Luis Lugo, James Dell. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Thank you very much for joining Adara and I on this Thursday. We are talking as we typically are about technical analysis today all week. We are doing a lesson on pullback trading. Before we get to that, good morning, Adara. Good morning. How are you this fine day? Not too bad. It's been kind of chaotic. As everyone probably knows, we're having um, connection issues, execution issues. I am in the sim today. I will be trading similar mode because, well, I'm just not good enough to trade live when we have these issues. So I will be taking sim trades. I want to make that very clear. What are you looking at today? Look at Todd. <laughs> What's going on there, Katina, man? Yeah, I know, bro. I know. That was a long morning for you. So, you know, 600 shares of AMD is not a joke. And without execution issues. It is a stress. I feel you. It's a stressla. Yeah, well, it wasn't stressful for the Katina man this That's morning, true. but yeah, the stress. Stock, but it yeah. definitely has a way of stressing you out. Lots to talk about today. Uh, are you looking at anything? I see some lines before I start the lesson. Yeah, I have uh, Nova Nordisk up. Uh, you know, Sharif has called me a GLP-1 trader in the past, <laughs> and there's a reason for that. I like trading these names, and I especially like them when there's a catalyst. Uh, we did have some... Uh, I think it was Wall Street Journal reporting that Medicare is saying that they're uh, looking to cover or that, that uh, insurance pe places can cover, sorry, for some of these weight loss drugs uh, for non-weight loss uses. So I think it was like heart disease is what I was seeing there as well. I want to get clarification on this headline, but I did see that one pop up a couple times. Here we go. Medicare agency says using obesity drugs for heart risk can be covered. So, uh, so that certainly gave these a little boost, but Lily doesn't, she's not on a milli right now, so we're ignoring mm -hmm. her. But Honestly, her chart looks almost identical to that of Novo. They break above a, oh, that's LLU, so that's, that's not what I want. Uh, they both break above a flat top, and then they're, oh, I guess that there's less, we're still kind of trying to break above the flat top in Lily, but we had a nice flat top in Novo. Novo just is a better setup to me. I mean, look at this. Volume's better. Look at that resistance becoming support. Uh, so honestly, if we can get involved in this, I would be, say it with me, please, as punch. First Bang, of the day. there So there we go. What are you, I know you were looking at First Solar, I think. I was. I should probably mention that. Thank you for reminding me about that. Right before we get to the lesson, I forgot who in the chat alerted me to FSLR. Now, you've been watching solar stocks in 2023 and 2024 so far. No go. Uh, likely as a result of the higher rate environment that we're in, startup costs on these solar projects is prohibitive still. Um, and it's, it becomes an interest rate story, sadly. So let's go have a look at the daily chart here on FSLR. Not a bad look. Okay, this is definitely held up a lot better than some of these other names. Not going to lie. Uh, I expected the chart to look a lot worse than this. So FSLR having a decent day. I'm not seeing exactly why it's moving in the chat. Let me find out here. Nope, not seeing anything from today. Let me look from yesterday. Nothing from yesterday either. So not really sure what to make of this. But again, it probably has something to do with rates. Uh, with Papa Powell getting on the mic yesterday and confirming that we will likely see three rate cuts this year or so believes the majority of the FOMC. So we'll have to wait and see here. I've got a dip trade hanging out at 155. Let me just take this off here quickly. Um, pa 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 uh, there it is. Okay, so I crossed. It crossed, but I didn't get filled. Uh, that's because the spread is prohibitive. 18 pennies on the bid, 35 pennies on the ask. So even though it did cross, I didn't get filled. So I should have been more alive to that fact and had a bit more of an aggressive uh, dip trade set up maybe at the quarter dollar 
or thereabouts. So it doesn't look like I will get filled. I'm not gonna chase this either. I know I'm in sim, but that doesn't really matter to me anyway. The, it, the reps are the same, whether you're doing it here or there, is obviously psychology is different, but we'll see. We'll see if we get filled. FSLR, keeping it on watch, likely an interest rate story. Um, and uh, oh, we have a super chat already. Oh. Vadzim, you are always beautiful as always. Oh, that's nice. I don't agree with you, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and hit the banks. Thank you very much for the 20 euro super chat. Jeez Louise, somebody had a good morning. Thank you very much uh, for that Vadzim. All right, let's get to work here, baby, because we have uh, a lesson to discuss. Pullbacks is the topic all week, guy, all week, guys, <laughs> weeks. Uh, yesterday, we did the measured move pullback, which includes Fibonacci's the day prior to that. We did support and resistance, and on Monday, we introduced the topic uh, from its basic format. If you want to go back and have a, a watch uh, of those lessons, just go back to the live video category in our YouTube homepage, and you'll see the, uh, the picture there with Adair and I and how to trade. So let's go and start this lesson. All right, so imagine you see a pullback in a trend, right? But you're unsure if it's a true buying or selling opportunity or a fake out. Could be a fake out, right? Divergence pullback confirmation comes to the rescue, baby. It combines price action in the pullback with technical indicators to give you your trade an extra confidence boost. So that's what we're looking for there. So we're looking to use technical indicators and have it jive with the price action so that we can get a better read on these markets. And that's what we're gonna look at right now. So understanding divergence, that's what we wanna look at here. So what happens during regular confirmation? Normally the price and a technical indicator like the RSI, which stands for Relative Strength Index, or the MACD, which stands for Moving Average Convergence Divergence, move in the same direction. So typically the price and the technical indicator move in the same direction. An upward trend in price typically means the price and the indicator both go high, all right? Downward trend, both go low. Hope that is very specific. However, that's not always what happens. There are cases of divergence, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. In an upward trend pullback, for example, the price dips. So we go up to say 200 on Apple, we dip back down to 190, but it's still bullish on the RSI. So what we'll see in that case is the RSI will either maintain the same level or make a new high, all the while the price dips down. Yeah, well the price dips down, so there has to be divergence in that case. So in a downward pullback, the price rises, but the indicator goes down, which is a bearish divergence, okay? A bullish divergence is when the price dips, but the indicator goes up. So remember yesterday we talked about bearish divergence and bullish divergence, continuing with that theme today, just from a different sense, okay? And here is a perfect example of it. Thank you for adding these in Adara. Adara's been doing amazing adding some uh, visualizations because well, text just is not enough to cut it these days, right? So here we go, the price coming down, right here we see consecutively lower highs, lower lows, you see that downward uh, trend line showing you the lower lows. But look at this, look at the RSI, higher low, higher low, higher low. Not necessarily higher highs, but higher lows. We're not getting higher lows on the price, ac price action. So we're getting divergence here. That's what we're looking for. And then another example of this one, so that was bullish divergence, this is bearish divergence. We're making higher highs on the price action. But when you look at the RSI, which is at the bottom, look at this. We crest out over here and then we have a lower high at the same area that the price made a higher high. So now we have a bearish divergence. The RSI and the price not jiving. The MACD and the price not jiving. So we have divergence in this case. So important. This is how Michael Noss showed me how to use RSI. He was of the opinion, and I don't know if he still is, that you should, it's not really well used when you're using it in the more simplistic way of looking for oversold or, 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 or yeah, sorry, oversold or overbought uh, locations, which is above 70 and below 30, okay? So here is how divergence works with pullbacks, because that's what we're talking about all week, right? Divergence during a pullback can be a quite a powerful signal. Here's why. 
So the bullish divergence that we talked about, bullish divergence in an uptrend pullback. All right, I have to put my phone on mute because it's driving me crazy. Where is my phone, by the way? Sorry, guys. I'm just gonna have to put this on do not disturb. So the bullish divergence in an uptrend pullback. The price dips, so we have a pullback in the price, but the indicator rises. That's again what we just talked about, bullish divergence. This suggests the price weakness might be temporary, hinting at more upside possibility, more upside continuation. That's when we have a bullish divergence. Bearish divergence, exactly the opposite. The price rises in a, in a pullback, so when we're, we're going back down, the price rises, but the indicator falls, which is showing us that's a bearish divergence. This suggests that the price strength might be fading or transient. Uh, shout out to Jerome Powell, hinting at a possible selling opportunity, right? So bullish divergence, bearish divergence, that's what we're looking for here. And here's how we put the whole thing into action. So the first thing we do, look, we've been talking about all week, you gotta spot the trend. What is the trend? It is up and to the right, down and to the right, or sideways, are we consolidative? So that's the first order of business, spot the trend. Second, spot the pullback, right? So are you looking at the chart and there's a key area where there is support for the long or resistance for the short? If there isn't, we can use FIBS, the measured move pullback yesterday. If there is a clear area of support and resistance, we go back to the techniques that we learned on Tuesday about support and resistance pullbacks, right? So number one, what's the trend? Number two, spot the pullback. And number three, in this case, we're looking for a divergence. And that's where we're adding that new element today, right? Does the technical indicator, like the RSI, like the MACD, show divergence during the pullback? bullish divergence in an uptrend pullback or bearish divergence in a downtrend pullback is what you're looking for in this particular case. So I hope that was very clear. So now let's talk about how to enter and exit the trade. So now we know what to look for. So check one, what's the trend? Check two, what's the pullback? Check three, look for divergence. Great, so we got all those check marks. So we still haven't gotten in the trade yet. So now let's talk about how to get into trade. Going long, based on bullish divergence during an uptrend pullback, enter a long position. What you're looking for here is you're looking to get in at that key support level or at that key Fibonacci retracement level. Obviously, that's what we're waiting for. So you ID the pullback area, and then you sit on your hands and you wait. You wait for that price to come into your area. You know, I mean, a lot of other traders would tell you, no, no, no you know, just get like 10% here and... If that's, so it doesn't, if it goes without you, it doesn't pull back into your area, you can wet your beak on some profits, participate in the uptrend. Do whatever you want, whatever figure, whatever works with your method, all right? Going short, exactly the same thing. You're spotting that key area of resistance. If there isn't one, you're using fibs, and then you're waiting for that area to come back and to confirm. And one thing I negated to mention yesterday, and I wanted to mention this uh, uh, as well. So when, it, when the price pulls back into area, guys, if you get the two shot here, uh, when, the pull, when the pullback comes into your area, let's just say to key areas of support or the FIB. Remember how we talked about confirmation? So just because the price comes into your area, does that mean we get long automatically no. or get short automatically? No, there's a rule, right? We have either the three-day rule, if we're going long on a swing, or the 3% rule. What are those? The three-day rule is that it has to close at or above that particular area, your pullback area, your pull-up area, whatever, for three straight days. Or you can wait for the 3% rule. If it breaks that area by 3%, then it's no go. It's not holding up at that area, right? If it closes below it three straight days in a row, it's not holding up at that area. That area is no good. That area is bogus. So we need ways to confirm, okay, this FIB 50% level, this, this makes sense. This key area of support, this 165 on Apple, it's holding up. We need confirmation. It's not enough for the price just to come back in and for us to punch willy-nilly and, and pray to God. You know what I mean? Or whoever you pray to, right? So that is, uh, that's a look there. I just want to mention that because I failed to mention that on the, the two previous days. You're looking, you need a method of confirmation. Whatever method you use, whether it's the three-day rule or the 3% rule or some other rule, just make sure it's consistent so that when you reflect back on your trades, you have uh, you know, similarly executed trades that you can, uh, you can compare. I hope that helps, okay? 
Exit. So how are you exiting this trade? So you're exiting the trade when the price breaks above the key area of resistance in a long or breaks below the key area of support uh, in a short. Uh, this is a perfect example of it right here. So there we go. So now we have the downtrend, but we have an uptrend with RSI. It comes the entry at the next pullback after the moving average break and your stop loss is below the pullback over here, right there. Okay, excellent uh, one there. Here are some caveats, and thank you, Adira, for throwing this in. Beware of the potential for false positives, uh, either bullish or bearish divergence signals that don't come to fruition. Always make sure you have confluence uh, with other factors, indicators before entering a trade. And some of these indicators, guys, are less effective and more prone to false signals in uh, the flat consolidative markets. Examples of false positive signals are right here. So here we go. So we have bearish divergence, but we don't have a continuation of the trend. What ends up happening is we consolidate, we move sideways. And that's like a trader's worst nightmare. Unless your name is Adair Panera, and then you're very, very happy. You are. You actually are. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and choosing your indicator, guys. Um, I don't want to tell you exactly what to choose, but the ones that I know how to use the, the best out of the two are, or the, the bunch, I would say, are RSI and MACD. I know Michael Moss was showing stochastics the other day when he was on on Monday. I personally don't use stochastics, but uh, yeah, keep that in mind. What I would say is experiment, see what works best for you, and you know, get some reps under your belt. Uh, and here's a little bit bonus tip. Imagine divergence as a disagreement between the price and the indicator. During a pullback, divergence suggests the indicator might be anticipating a trend resumption, giving you more confidence in your area. That's how I would want to view uh, divergence during pullbacks there. Yeah, no, thank you so much for going over that. No I have a question too. So oh. with regards to, uh, you want to get involved in something on a pullback and then you're waiting for confirmation. Could you also find confirmation if you see like, let's say we have a couple candles on like the three or the five minute where we have like these wicks below. Uh, if you're in a, a long and we're holding or if we have these wicks above in a short and you're holding. So are there, I guess, are there different ways to kind of look for support at a key level? Yeah, uh, I like would the say, shorter term? like, you know, anyway, like when we look, um, on for te oh, for uh, for support and resistance for our area, is there a key area like that keeps coming into play on the day or on the week or whatever time frame during which we're trading? Absolutely, it doesn't have to be on the daily. I could, you know, as long as we're trading off the same time frame and basing it off the same time frame, I'd say go for it. Thank there. you. Yeah, I appreciate that. That would be. And by the way, this is why, guys, I I don't like to trade while I talk because I got in long 155 on FSLR and I just lost a dollar a share. Guys, I'm in the sim today. We have execution issues on the floor. And so uh, we're going to be we're going to be doing some sim trading today. So uh, I should be taking this more seriously, obviously. But, you know, I didn't put it a stop for this FSLR trade. What have you been looking at since I was talking about? Yeah, so I actually do have um, a trade I'm, or a series of trades I'm really excited to talk about. And shout out to Joanna Brewster because I believe you're in that involved in that name as well. But first, because we're involved in the SPY, I want to keep spying the SPY. Shout out to Kyle Burdett for saying, hey, the SPY's kind of been in a, a, a nice range all day. I like that. I said... I want all the smoke. Shout out to Sharif, who sometimes will say that. <laughs> but so I got involved. I will admit my entry here was very meh. Uh, so I got involved here because I noticed that we had this really nice VWAP bounce, and I was like, cool, let's get involved in that. I wait to watch it bounce. I wait to see we hold there. I get involved. And it's like, you know what? Nah. And it's like, Adara, well, why, why would you do that anyway? You know with your ETFs, you're supposed to be looking more at the, the book. And I mean, we did hold it well in the book, but either way, it wasn't meant to be. I got out when we made a lower low here, I had to say au revoir. Then I was like, you know, watch for the bottom of this range. Let's see how this holds. It's holding very nicely. We're getting out as we as we encroach upon VWAP. As we get near VWAP, I do not want to be here any longer because uh, beyond the, of where it is in the chart, where it is in the book here, that 52340 uh, area has certainly had some kind of strange magnetism. So this is where we're going to leave the trade. Pleased as dang Woo! punch. Um, but also I want to talk about, uh, we're still basically flat in the name or slightly down in the name, I want to clarify, but I'm mostly just happy because sometimes when you fall down, you have to get back up in a way that makes sense. I knew that first entry was risky, but if I saw one I like better, I shouldn't be too scared to enter it, right? So I wanted to do that. Also, Reddit is not open. I'm seeing some mentions of Reddit. 
Um, but yeah, Joanna Brewster saying, yes, smash those trades. Yeah, um, I mean, congrats Bang. to you. You're still in the log. I left AMD, but I am deserted it. But I want to talk about what my interest was in the first place. And if you are thinking maybe it's a range, you're not wrong. I got involved here at the bottom of this range because I noticed we were holding this range really well, 179 to 179.50. The plan was to get involved with enough shares so I could kind of piecemeal it. I was going to take out some out at the 179.50 and then reload. We didn't really get a reload, but I still like how we held above. I was going to leave if we broke, we're going to be like 50 pennies. If we broke decisively, decisively below 178.50, I was going to get out. We held 178.60 really well, so I added around 178.75s. Then, as you can tell here, we fat fingered a little bit, punched out early, lost about 14 paper cents because I'm still in the sim on that one. So, c'est la vie. Uh, you live, you learn, and you save pieces for the dream. And I did, so I had enough to get out here around 179.30s. Then I got back in because I noticed we were holding... Uh, oh, no, I guess sorry, I got some out 179.30, saved a piece at 179.50. Then I got back involved. Uh, the, the thesis was going to be the same. We start at 179.10s with the small position, and then we kind of layer ourselves in and out. We didn't have time to layer. We got to 179.50 post haste. I got out, took about 20 cents. Really small size, though, because part of my plan was going to be to add as I went, right? So, c'est la vie. You got, you got to do what the, the market gives you and roll with the punches. But congrats to you, Joanna Brewster. Great look here on AMD. I don't know why I drew this line here. I think this line should be slightly lower, so we're going to redraw this line. Thank you to Sharif for telling me about these lines that you can oh, do, yeah. where you can just draw the whole thing straight instead of me having to adjust my lines in a haphazard way throughout the day. But I'm going to be watching what we do at 180.60, uh, because look at all these wicks below here. This was a really clear area of support, and another example of, of, I think, a pullback if you're in the short here. So let's take a look at this. Also, we have to keep an eye on Apple, because this one um, got a little bit Tim Cooked this morning, unfortunately. <laughs> um, Look at this! Uh, look at this! Uh, thank you, thank you, the there, Fabian. The production team is undefeated. Fabian, really did you hear the way it. Fabian laughed? He right was like, now? Uh, <laughs> "I was like, I've never heard him laugh like that in my life." <laughs> Come on, Fabian. But yeah, Sorry but to nice look on there. this one. Apple, no, it's okay. I mean, I, I also enjoyed that. There, yeah. Fabian's enjoying, uh, having a great time there. Fabian and Ramin, always killing it. Um, although, look at this Apple, though. Uh, this, this dance around the 9 EMA is really interesting. As I mentioned, I like this level. Part of me is like, maybe I want to try shorting it from here. But the other part of me is like, we have some wicks down, which would suggest potentially a buy zone. Some wicks up, which potentially suggests a sell zone. I honestly, oh, my mic fell. We're having a, we're having a day over here on I Thursday. Know. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have to wait and see what Apple does because this would be a bit of a momentum trade uh, as Sharif and I discussed yesterday, okay. which is not really something I necessarily want to get involved with. But if I take it small size, I could, I could, it could easily be convinced by myself to take a really small position in this. We're going to have to wait and see what we do here on AAPL, not taking a bite out of that one just yet, but AMD coming into 180.60, so I'm going to have eyes on that. If we hold up that area of support at 180.60, we could maybe do a little bit of, of scalping, yes, indeed. And yeah, Kyle Burdett, thank you again for calling out that spy range because there's still something uh, to look at there. Might be getting tighter, though. Might be more of a, a 523 to 52340 area. So we'll see what happens. I don't have any trades on right now, but always keeping an eye to see what the market and these mega cap tech names are willing to give me. I'm hitting the dollar club for Aaron and Joanna Brewster because my, my friend there is a dollar in the money on AMD. AMD. Shout out to you, Aaron and Joanna Brewster. Very happy for you, and I'll shout you out whenever I can. All right. I promised coffee person in the chat there. Who's that? Coffee trader. Coffee trader that I look at the NQ, and I shall. So let's go ahead and have a look at the future on the day. We're looking at the June contract now, guys, as the March contract has now expired. Now, what I see here is a series of lower highs and lower lows, right? So what we have here is, you know, not an aggressive downward channel, but a downward channel nonetheless. Uh, there it is, he, as clearly kind of identified by these uh, trend lines in, ensconcing the downward trend channel with lower highs and lower lows. We're not getting aggressively lower lows, so they're, they're kind of marginally lower. Now, if you're basing it on the wicks or the closing prints, they still account for lower lows. So with respect to the wicks, we wicked down to 18.625, and then we got down to 2.19, then we're 2.17. So like a, you see what the trend here is? Very, very small movements. Um, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of respect for the volume weighted average price on the day on the NQ. We zig a little bit above it, a little bit below it, a little bit above it. So we're kind of in no man's land here. I also feel like I'm in no man's land with respect to the range. 
between the 100 point levels. 18.6 hasn't been touched on the day and there's only been one touch at 18.7 and that was right after the uh, market open. You could even call this the IB high. Shout out to Dan the Man Emmons. 18.709, but I would say, you know, keep your eye on that 100 point level like we always talk about. Uh, the future, I don't have a good read on it today. You're probably not going to see me trade the NQ. That is until we come in to a key level of support or resistance on the day. Where the hell did we close yesterday on the NQ? Why can't I see my closing print, bruh? Um, okay. Usually it shows me a dotted line of the close on the NQ, and right now I'm not seeing one, so that's fine. I'll, uh, I'll look for that later because what I do is I chart the, the closing print. Oh, maybe because... We rocket it up. Oh, here it is. Okay, so the closing print on the NQ yesterday, 18480. That's why I couldn't find it because it was so far below we were trading. So, yeah, we're likely not going to see the closing print, so we need to work off. Let me see. Are we? No, we're not even ranging between pivots. No, no, not at all. So I don't have a good read on the future today. I'll just tell you flat out. So I'm going to leave the future on its own until we get into these 100 uh, point levels and maybe we can base some trades off there. A couple of trades that I do have right now, I'm back into FSLR at the 154 level. And there's a reason for that. This is the kind of the consolidation uh, bottom that we put in after the bell. It's also where the volume weighted, ab volume weighted average price is hanging out right at that 154 level. So I'll be looking to defend that. I already have my stop in place. Uh, for the break of 153.80 on FSLR. A bit of a V-shaped retracement. See if we can scalp a little bit on there. But KAVL, small cap gapper du jour, baby. And this big boy is up 133%. Let's talk a little bit about the deets here. Uh, it's an $8.8 .8 million market cap. So, I mean, minuscule. Um, and the float is about 2.8 million shares. Let's find out if that's accurate. Let's bring in trade ideas I here. I saw a smaller float. For yeah, I, I'm seeing 36,000 shares, but I can't believe that that's accurate. I was seeing 800 something thousand. You're right. I see here 789,000. So I'm going to go ahead and agree with Adair on that one. Uh, I see 789, um, and the float, uh, sorry, the short float is about 2.15%. So not negligible, but not exactly. You know, earth shattering either. We're long at 01, so let's wet our beak here on some profits. Again, guys, today I am in the sim. Okay, so these are this is all fake money right here. Uh, but my stop is gonna be below that $2.90 break. Let's talk about why 290, not three. The volume weighted average price is at three. The whole dollar level obviously is at three. But look at this top that we put in initially. This is a bull flag and then we get the continuation. Look at the top end of the bull flag. It's right at 290. And then look where the retracement comes in here to defend that 290 level. It doesn't hold up at three bucks. In fact, it goes to $2.92. So I have to place my stop where the actual resistance, or sorry, the support is and that is at $2.90. So I put it a smidge below that level in the high 80s to get out. So right now, printing on it about 15 pennies in the money. Let's see if we can make our way up into 30s over here because we had a bit of a consolidation top right there. So let's go ahead and put another beak wetter uh, at, let's put 25, because 25 is my favorite number, because I'm born on the 25th. And we'll see if we get filled. Let's see what FSLR is doing now. FSLR is at my beak wetter. I have a profit taker hanging out at 154.40, but because of the spread being four pennies, it's got to cross 40 on the bid, not on the ask, for me to get filled. We're having some execution issues today. I don't know if that extends in the, the, the sim or not, but we'll see if we get filled. Looking for FSLR to hold the 154 owing to that bottom end consolidation over here, the volume weighted average price, and the whole dollar level. Yeah, I mean, that, that you got to love those spready names that like to make you clutch your pearls and, and <laughs> see what happens. Because NVIDIA was giving me some grief uh, with, in that regard. Yesterday, I spoke ad nauseum about that. Actually, it ended up being beneficial. I did better than I should have on the trade, but I also couldn't feel that good about the trade because it's like I did better than I should have because th there were issues, right? So it's a weird, confounding feeling. Also, a weird, confounding feeling is getting short the cues and then they make a new, um, a higher high. That's okay, though. In all honesty, I, I knew this was going to be risky. It's like a Dara, it's an ETF. They're harder to range play. But that being said, I did like those lower highs, lower lows that Sharif mentioned. I saw it and I 
I see a range. I immediately must pull up said range. We were holding below, or we're holding around that 448 really, really well. We broke up above that 4, uh, 48.25 with a viciousness. If we'd done it a little bit slowly, I would have kept an eye on it, but it was with a viciousness. So I had to say, uh, yeah, je ne sais pas. I had to say au revoir, uh, waiting for the next trade. Thank you so much, Joanna Brewster, for the support. Much appreciated. Also, shout out to you, because this AMD, I was eyeing to see what we did at that 180.60 area. AMD was like, what level are you talking about? Keeping going to the upside. <laughs> so uh, congrats to you on that. AMD looks like it's approaching VWAP. I honestly, if, if we get rangy around here, I might have to take a look. Did you see what Mr. Lib wrote in the chat? I have to read this out Oh, this out is really loud. funny. At Sharif. Sharif, you got to quit it, bro. Got my toddler yelling randomly throughout the day. Big Kyle Burnett. It's Burnett, but Burnett is how he says it. It's funny. The first few days, now not so much. I'm so sorry, Mr. <laughs> Lamb. Big Kyle likes that too, though. Big Kyle, I thought it was funny. I just want to mention and shout out Big Kyle Burdout, shout out to you, my man. I hope you're printing. I know you were uh, planting stuff yesterday. How is that going, Kyle? How'd that tree planting go? You probably have a bit better weather than us because outside, ain't nobody planting anything outside right here, my friend. And it was like minus 7 degrees centigrade this morning. And, uh, yeah, I was not pleased as punch. Yeah, I mean, Just I don't blame you. I wasn't pleased either. Literally, the first thing that comes in, Sharif comes in today, and he's like, it's so cold. And I was <laughs> like, yeah. Because I, I walked to work, and so I'm always like, chilly um but yeah so so definitely uh Pamp it. definitely chilly outside but shout out to you kyle burdett for being able to plant things because we are very jealous over here yes. in to also apple is recovering really nicely i said that 90 ma was going to be a spicy area and it certainly was mark ace where i didn't get to look at this one earlier i know uh, you were mentioning this one but yeah i think you mentioned you went long off this apple honestly this 90 ma hold and push up not a bad idea at all. And again, we, we talked about this yesterday, how sometimes these levels can go from support to resistance, or in this case, resistance to support. The 9 EMA was a beautiful resistance area earlier today. Then we chop and turn for quite some time, and we're starting to see the support. Of course, who knows if it'll hold up there, but if we get rangy here around 172.80 to 173, Sign me up. I don't know why I said it like that, but I was, I am legitimately very entranced and ensconced and emotionally invested in what we do in this. I'm joking about the emotionally invested, but I am very curious to see what we have to do here in this range. Also, I can't believe I abandoned Nova Nordisk or Nova, Nova Nordisk, Nova Nordisk, what have you. Either way, um, you know, I, I, I should have taken the Nova Nord risk and gotten involved in this. I had a beak wetter, or not a beak wetter, I had an area of entry around 130, and then I pulled it out because I was very caught up in the AMD madness. And then in the end, I should have just left it there because look, you would have gotten that 130 fill, we would have continued to the upside. My profit taking goal was 103.40, so, oh sorry, 130.40, so it would have been about a 40 cent uh, petty taker, but it woulda, woulda, coulda, shoulda, right? Didn't happen. Let's see what's next. If we bounce off of that 130.40, and it looks like we might, don't mind if I do. A little bit more of a momentum trade for me. That's the one thing that has me a little bit, you know, filled with trepidation. But as Sean says, a scared trader is a deficient trader, and we don't want to be deficient around these parts. Um, Tesla, I want to look at as well, because I had some, saw some mentions of the Cybertruck or the Roadster earlier today. I don't have a huge look on this, I have to say. We, we have slightly higher highs. Uh, sorry, higher lows, lower highs are not really a thing. We have this weird fascination with the area just above 175. Uh, if we reject here, though, if this 90 MA, look at this topping tail candle. I see a short potentially in my horizon for uh, Monsieur Stressla. So we're going to have to see if we can get involved in this. Coffee Trader asking if I'm Canadian or from the U.S. I'm Canadian. I am from Winnipeg, though, which is an area, oddly, culturally, a lot more similar to the U.S. because we have Applebee's and stuff and Olive Garden. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I am from Canada, though, but I am just from, and I've been told my accent's a little different, so I don't know if that's what, but I am from Canada. Hold Let's on. see what so Tesla called, gives me. We called, thank you. We call that the prairies, right? Yeah, we're from Manitoba's the prairies. prairies. Yeah. So is that also count as the Midwest? Do we call it Midwestern can Like the, the Americans call that yeah. area the Midwest, right? So, so I tried to once, and my mom was like, you're not from the Midwest, <laughs> you're from the prairies. Oh, so I got shots like... That's fire. Yeah, I got a little like verbally like <laughs> smacked around there, verbally. Of course, you yeah, know, my mom was just like, say prairies, not the Midwest. Yeah, so. yeah, Canadians, very proud people. There we go. Yeah, mi Mid-North says mid -north. I kind of like that one. Winterpeg <laughs> says Roland Joe. So yeah, he knows what he's talking about there. But yeah, I am from Canada. Uh, but Tesla is not. But Tesla's 
was killing it in Europe with those sales. That's why initially it was up, then it fell, then Morgan Stanley pumped it, then it fell. So when I say pumped it, they just had a positive letter saying that no one is really in a position in the EV space to go against Tesla and um, and BYD. But I am going to pass it off to you with this lovely note yeah, yeah. from the Hayes Records. America, Applebee's and Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> Which okay. I, uh, I, I love really, it. I enjoyed that. So, yeah, here we go. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with KAVL, but the, the action started picking up here. Now we're getting a lot more volat volatility. And we seem like, we, you know, we were incrementally making our way up into that three and a quarter, three and a fifth. And then we got a big boy Hua Dung topping till candle. You can see it right here, albeit on the one minute. So you take it with less importance. I, I don't really don't want to say it like that, but... Uh, obviously something on the larger time frame more confirmatory than on this shorter time frame here. Anyway, the point of why I'm saying this whole thing is because we really started moving in the tape here. Uh, and that hadn't been the case prior to that. The tape had been moving, you know, not slowly, but not, not wild uh, like KVL. Now it's kind of calming down a little bit. So maybe somebody was uh, getting out of this trade. We'll see. I'm looking to defend that $3 next profit taker. We're looking at three and a quarter, but this one, the volume, for the exception of that little uh, action we got 30 seconds ago, slowing down a little bit, as you can see on the volume bars, decreasing a little bit here. Okay, so now we're, we have questions to be asked here about FSLR. It's not holding 154, so this is gonna likely have to be the end of my trade on this. If it breaks any lower, we're gonna have to flatten out on this bad boy, but Looking for FSLR to hold 154, which is the bottom end or the, the midpoint of this range that we were uh, ranging at. So we'll have to see whether this holds or not. It broke 154.40 so many times for me to get a beak wetter in and around there. But the, the spread was just so wide we could not cross. So uh, that that's really my issue there for choosing to get into this. So anyway, keeping eyes on this and uh, we'll look to... Uh, Get out of that. DWAC making a nice move off 40 bucks, now up into 42. For whatever reason, DWAC was moving yesterday. Let's pull up DWAC over here. Uh, not quite at 42, but knocking on the door. We're showing 41.95 here on the ask. Uh, DWAC could be along into 43 and a half, okay? That's where I see multiple areas of resistance. We have that print. At 9.30 at the low, you want to call that the IB low, we have 10.15, 10.18, another test at 43.50, and then another one over here. So this is an interesting long here on DWAC uh, through the break of 42. I think there is a dollar fifty potential uh, to the upside, and it's going. There we go. Spready, though, much like FSLR, which I now have to get out of. Um, D yeah, so I did get out of it. So my stop triggered. Good, because we've been having issues with that. Uh, so much like FSLR, this one's a 15 penny spread. I'm talking about DWAC, um, which is a bit of an issue, obviously, because the spread, uh, you know, it may, it, it's hard to take profits when there's just such a big spread between the bid and the ask there. So I'm trying to think of maybe I'll put in a dip trade at 42, and then if it triggers in and around there, that would be... Uh, one way to combat the spread. So I'll look to maybe dip at 42. I'm not going to chase this. If it goes, it goes. That's fine. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll make do without that. Guys, I've also got the Reddit chart on my side. As soon as that bad boy starts uh, trading, we'll bring that to you live. But if you see Reddit trading before I do, because sometimes I'm flipping between screens, I may not see it. Definitely let me know. Probably we'll get a bunch of shouts from traders on the floor once Reddit starts trading. Uh, New York, uh, it's, it's gonna launch on the NYSE, the New York Stock Exchange, which is uh, a little bit of a wild card uh, when it comes to launches for uh, IPOs from what I've been told. Not like I'm a proficient IPO trader or anything like that. So we'll have to wait and see. All right, long DWAC here at 40s. Um, 40 penny spread now. Look at this, 81s on the bid, 18s at the ask. I mean, this is just, it's, it's wild. So we'll have to see if we can tighten up and we'll look to take some profits on the high side. Trading in the sim today, guys, we are having execution issues on the floor. 40 penny spread, what is this, Eli Lilly? I know, like, right? What's what I think it is. Also, speaking of Lily and her weight loss drug buddies, um, Nova Nordisk, bless you, uh, Nova Nordisk 
I did get involved in this. I was going to wait. I want to see what we did at that 130, 45 area. Then I realized, you know what? This actually could just be a nice opportunity here. So I took it with really small size. The plan being if we dip into 45s, I'm adding to this position. If we don't dip into 45s, I still have a sell order ready at 130, 80. So I'll still get some of this out. I would like to add to the position, though, so I can kind of have a little bit more room to, to kind of to spread the love here on this GLP-1 trade. So we're going to wait and see what occurs. Uh, Joanna Brewster is still holding on to that AMD long, which congrats to you because that is almost at 181 there. Also, uh, IK mentioning Lily, uh, Eli Lily. Let's look at this. Yeah, shout out to you. And the, Lily's at a milli now, so I can actually give her maybe the time of day. So I might have to keep an eye on this. I like this move above, uh, move on to the 90 EMA, but we're dipping slightly below it here too. This area I'm always cognizant of because I've noticed if it holds, it doesn't always hold right, but if it holds well as an area of support, it can often flip to an area of resistance just like that. And same with if it holds as an area of resistance, right? This waffling around the 90 EMA, does not instill me with a lot of confidence until I see what we do next. I need to wait and see what happens. I don't have a good read on this. Tesla, I'm very much kicking myself. I didn't take that short off of that uh, 173 area. Sorry, 175. We dip below. New low of day for the Cybertruck. Just continuing to, to drive down that hill to... Um, to the downside, yeah, James Dell, I like this. Donut hole and then Zempic, so oh, Zempic. I guess, you know, hopefully we'll be making some dough Zempic on this trade, but I, nothing has happened there yet um, to really give me any confidence in that. We're a cool three pennies on the money in the sim with a very small share size, so hopefully we can add to that position. If not, say la vie, the market is gonna do what the market is gonna do. AMD continues to be fascinating to me. This is a name I've been trying to trade a little bit more in the last few days, because it's a name that used to intimidate me a little bit. When I say intimidate, I just mean the speed at which this moves. There's someone in the chat who called this one, I think it was Stuart a couple days ago in the chat calling this a widow maker, because AMD can move really quickly, but I mean, if you can capture those movements, Power to you. I know Sean trades AMD. Shout out to Joanna Brewster again trading this name. I want to see if there's an opportunity here to buy at the 186. I really should have taken this opportunity earlier because look at how well we held that support earlier. I was worried we were going to see resistance. Nope. AMD was like more support. So nice recovery to the upside. We are currently green on the day for AM Dizzle. AM Dizzle. AM Dizzle. As Sharif will sometimes call it. <laughs> so nice look there for AM. Also, I know you said you have the, the Reddit chart. On your side, I have the yeah. Reddit book up as well, oh, waiting to see what I happens. I think that that's so actually a better move. Between the two of us, we're going to let you know if we see any posts in Reddit, metaphorically speaking, because there'll be trades. How are you doing? Good, good. Uh, DWAC, you know, about like nine pennies out of the money on this one. The one that I do like, though, that I'm holding out more hope for, KAVL. You guys have heard me talk umpteen amount of times about small cap gappers and trading above the volume weighted average price. KAVL looks like it really is using VWAP and the $3 level as a good area of support. Keeps bouncing off that area. My only concern is it's having trouble breaking through that three and one fifth. So that 20 penny area seems to be an area of resistance for KAVL. And that presents an issue to me because we're looking to what our beak at the quarter dollar. So that's five pennies above that key resistance zone. So keeping my eye on that and uh, looking for more. Now, people were telling me stuff in the chat. I was just using the bathroom there. And let me just look at what people were saying. Yanis, B, head and shoulders on Tesla. Let's have a look. Here is TSLA, head and shoulders. Knees and toes. All right, let me Knees see. and toes, knees. Uh, what time frame, Yanis, are you looking at? Because uh, this is the 10. I don't see it on the 10, possibly. Left shoulder, head, but that's the opening print at 4 a.m. So I'm reluctant to use any 4 a.m. prints as the head. And then maybe that's the right shoulder. I'm not sure. Let me know what time frame you're looking at, but let's look at Tesla anyway. I always typically have Tesla on the five minute look. Tesla looks weak to me, okay? Uh, number one, it's a hockey stick pattern down and then to the right consolidative. We have a 174 flat bottom. Now, we're getting wicks below 174, but look at how aggressively they're being bought. Now, that I would say if I had to play Tesla today, it would be a 175.50 to 174 range play owing to the volume weighted average price and the resistance that it's caused on any price action ascent into that level. 
Okay, it's also rejecting off pivots. It's also rejecting off the closing print. So a lot of confluence with respect to that resistance level. I'm talking about 175 two thirds, 175 and a half thereabouts. You have pivots there. You have the volume weighted average price there, and you have yesterday's closing print all in that general area. So it's going to take some buying to move up Tesla above that level. So if you had to play Tesla, 174 to the low side, 175 and a half, 175 and two thirds to the high side. How was the walk, Katina man? Great. It was cold outside, like the B word. No. no? Okay. Like it was not bad. <laughs> Katina man is killing me, bro. Uh, yeah. So uh, that's how. <laughs> That's how I see <laughs> Tesla. I don't know what's going on. Beautiful, right? Of course, Ooh, of course, Katina. Beautiful. Man. I like That's that. the B word. There you go. Um, one quick note, KAVL. We made it up to 320 again, and yet again, Adara, we find resistance at that level. How many times are we going to reject off, reject off that one-fifth of a dollar? So let's wet our beak on some profits here. Let's flip back to DWAC and see what DWAC is doing or not doing, still hanging out right, right at that area. Nothing uh, to worry about here. Stop below 41.50. Ewok is being like kind of calm. But yeah, nice, bit, nice yeah. look on that right now. I feel like maybe it's going to be the calm before the move to the upside. Ah, we're going to see. I like that. Um, and you know what? We, we're all going to be uh, cheering Pamp it for Sharif <laughs> in his Dwalk trade. Also, I will be cheering. I won't be cheering Damp it. I will just be thinking it for myself. We are a cool flat on this spy short right now. I don't want my point of entry on this. I should have waited to 70s. I got in at 63s. However, why I got in, I've been saying I'm trying to be less reliant on the chart for my ETF trades. So what we did was we looked at the book. I liked that we were curling down. I also liked that we could not make a higher high. Further, I like that look at this wick up. Regardless of, of what you want to say about charts, it shows that you know there's some real struggle, some difficulties eclipsing that 523.80 area, at least right now. So I watched. I said, Adara, if we get above 523.80 with the viciousness, you leave the trade. Guess what? We got to 75s. We came right the heck back down. So I, you know what? I'm comfortable with this. However, this little dance around the 9 EMA I don't love, but also I'm you know, trying to be less reliant on charts, right? So we're going to do this purely on price action. If we break above 523.80, we will shall extricate ourselves from this trade post haste. So let's see what's happening. Sean saying Reddit tap is 44. Thank you very much nice. uh, for that one. We're going to have to, yeah, see what happens here for La Spy short. Um, we're, we're, yeah, we're still more or less flat in this. And I think staring at it will be interesting to exactly no one. So let's look at this. I know Neil's talked about this sometimes too. It's like really easy to think if you stare at a trade for a long time, it'll make it more interesting or have things happen. But um, yeah, that, uh, that's not the case, right? So uh, we will move on to Apple. Apple, this was a bamboozler. I was saying earlier, I like that idea of that long holding that VWAP area, or not VWAP, sorry, 90 MA. And Apple was like, <laughs> jokes. <laughs> Fell to the downside. Did not make a new lower low, though. Right now, previous low around 172s on a closing basis. Now we're hanging out 172.25. So let's see if we hold this. I don't have a trade in this right now unless it gets rangy because, um, yeah, I know, shockingly. But I do like my ranges, so I'm going to continue to look for this. Uh, Fugazi Bear, thank you so much for this $5 super chat. Thank you, Panera, for saving my day with the Apple notice. I honestly, like, happy to help. That's what we're doing yeah, here. We're course. trying to provide this market knowledge. Also, Sharif, where can I get a Hubble telescope to see where the future is going? <laughs> Very oh, good Thank question. So Four ninety nine. Thank you very much for uh, that super chat, Fugazi Bear. Look, man, I mean, uh, I'm really into space, uh, by the way. One thing I haven't made, the big purchase, is a good telescope yet, hopefully soon in my future. Uh, but with respect to seeing the futures, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's that kind of uh, look you're going for. I think what the look we're going for is a technical analysis. And let's have a look at the future. Because since I looked at the future last, Adara, NVIDIA, flipped me off and told me, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm moving the market the way that I want to move it. And well, we just bu busted up through that range. We were talking about 18, six and two thirds. Well, forget about that. We're on our way to 18.7 here, baby. And we could ma be making our way up into 18.7 very shortly. We're 10 points off that at the moment. And if in case you're wondering why, why the future's pumping while all the Meg 7s are dead weight. Well, guess what? There's one Meg 7 that is not dead weight. 
And I'll give you one guess. You'll only need one to guess which one it is, and it is NVDA, obviously. We're on our way. We're about a dollar, two dollars now off HOD, 926.48 high a day. We're printing 925 now, so we're a dollar and a half off high a day. Look at that. IB high, shout out to Dan the Man Emmons, the implied balance high is at 926.48, and we're, we're almost there. But the thing about this one is, it didn't show its hand right away, right? You had to have that big boy Hwadunk into that 904.05, which is LOD, and then the evidence started coming, the higher low, the higher high, and then that kept repeating. Look at this. So we have 904, oh, 904.05 cents is a low, and then the very obvious trough subsequent to that is 906.88. And then if you really want to call this a trough, I don't. This is more of a consolidation low. 9.14. And then above that, 9.18 and a quarter. So that kept coming in. So it didn't show its hand right away, but eventually it did and it brought up the market with it. So we'll see if we can get continuity through HOD on NVDA. Um, and then we have to chart because we have to see where the next resistance level is, is on NVIDIA. And that takes us back, guys, into that March 13th, 8 a.m. pre-market top. Now, this is pre-market, okay? This is all, no, I don't want to call this all private because it's a four-hour look, so this could include after the bell as well. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to be that 938, 940 area. That is the crest over here on March 13th. And it began March 12th. Like, look at those big boy green candles taking Ooh. us into that crest for a 4 a.m. gap up and open into that 940. So I'm going to say if we continue here, uh, 940 uh, resistance on NVIDIA. I don't know if we see 940, though, but just putting that out there as, a, as an area to keep your eye on. Okay, so we just touched 18.7 on the future. So here we go. We're at near high days. We're nine points off now, high of day on the NQ June contract. So let's see if we get that continued strength the north side. Let's see what DWAC is doing. Seven pennies in the money on DWAC. Nothing doing there. Let's see what um, KAVL is doing. There we go. Now we break above that nine and a fifth. So let's see if we can get that quarter print. We're about two pennies away from getting printed at the quarter dollar. And of course, as I talk about it, it comes down. So maybe... You know, <laughs> we'll mention it next time. But looking for that continuation on KAVL, likely to have a bit of trouble breaking through that nine and a quarter, nine and a third, owing to this consolidation area over here between, yeah, you guessed it, nine and a fifth and nine and a third. So we'll see if we get that pop up. I'm sitting there at nine and a quarter waiting to get filled. Let me just look quickly at some of these other names that I've got up on the side here. Uh, I wanted to mention Carvana as well before I send it back to Adara. And the reason is there's nothing specific on Vana on the day. But if you look at the, uh, well, yeah, you can, you can see that. Here's the 30 minute on Vana. So we kind of based out, yeah, it's a strong look on Vana, guys, since ba basically late February. I, I don't happen to believe in this company for the long term. I just don't think. Anyway, whatever. That's not the point at the moment. Um, $90, I believe, $90 and a half. That's the top that we put in March 8th. Where are we at right now? Looks like we tried to break the door down on 90 bucks. 89.96 on CVNA, but now look where we're at. So this is a very interesting area here for Vana, even though it's doing low volume. 88.50, right at the volume weighted average price. Do we hold up at these areas? We're positive on the day. I said we're up two and a third, two and a, uh, almost two and a half. And we're at a critical resistance level, or support level, excuse me, uh, at volume weighted average price. So we'll see if Vana holds up at these levels. Could be a nice bounce back up to maybe even test 90 bucks, Adira. Yeah, I mean, what, what this market is, is just doing beautifully. You know, shout out to everybody here. Um, so many things moving in this market that are are. You know, killing it, as Joanna Brewster says here, chips breaking higher with the viciousness. And indeed they are. So shout out to you in the AMD long, I believe. Elon also saying long AMD from 178. So congrats to you, Sean, long AMD. Everybody's long AMD. I had some little uh, scalps on AMD and then it, it moved up. So uh, what, yeah, this is a, what a look here. The way we held that 179 area was really gorgeous in, in the morning, early at the beginning of the, um, the how to trade show formerly known as the midday. Also, I left the spy. You know, Neil said once, uh, you know, losing trades should be boring. This one is. We broke above 
uh, 5.23.80 was a viciousness? I said, bye, spy. I said, yeah, I mean, we said bye to the spy. I'm going to watch. I don't have a read on this right now, so I'm just going to stay away from it. That's going to be the look on this. Uh, what else is, is cooking? Oh, I still have a resting uh, area to enter Tesla, which I'll, I said I still. I, I entered it literally right as Sharif was uh, finishing up there. <laughs> but um, I like the idea of this 174.60 rejection. I watched it with my own two eyes. We rejected it beautifully. I said, I want all the smoke. And then Tesla's like, eh, just kidding. We're going we're gonna to hang out. So I'm going to have to wait and see here. This could actually be more of a range to the long side, though. This could be, hey, we give you 174.30 to 174.60. Either way, I'm going to try to short it 60s because the general trend is lower highs, lower lows. So I don't want to be too counter trend with it. That being said, if it starts ranging 174, 60 to 174, 30 in a decisive way, will it take the range in both directions? Honestly, probably. But I have to wait and see what happens here. Also, Nova Nordisk weird, being weirdly bamboozling, which is not a sentence I thought I would say. I took it uh, over Lily because I thought it was going to be a little bit less stressful and I liked the chart patterns better. I liked how we held up that area for a while and then we just kind of tanked. So uh, we're going to give this a couple pennies more. We're going to give this to 130.20, which is an area I already drew out here because that was that previous high. Support can become resistance. You know, we've seen it in the past, but if it doesn't here, I'm going to have to... Uh, be gone LP1 from this trade. So let's have to see what happens. Uh, none of you have been saying, Adara, when do you think you'll be taken off the sim? I think a lot of folks are excited about it. What is the criteria? I think there's a certain amount of green days that you have to have that honestly I've never had. However, the last couple um, weeks, things have been going better. I like Sean with the, the light bulb emoji there. Yeah, honestly, I'm gonna be really honest, it has been a, a better couple of weeks. Although I've noticed Mondays, I always, are like horrible to the point where I'm like, oh, how will I ever trade again? And then you just kind of get into a groove, right? So nice. I think I really want to see a better trading Monday for myself. But other than that, I have to say I'm feeling a little bit more confident. So I think I would like to, but I also don't want to go live and then, you know, blow the firm's money either, right? So you want to make sure you feel more confident. That being said, since I've kind of settled into this micro scalping strategy, I do feel more confident in my trades. And I think the results are mostly reflecting that. So yeah, I just want to... I, I want to be open about that. Uh, Kyle Burdett mentioning uh, this beautiful 524 short opportunity for the SPY. I'm going to probably want to see this failure a couple times and then wait to make sure my timing's right. I, I said this a couple times. How is trading been? Is it really, like volumes are crazy, I bet? Possibly leaves a lot to be desired, especially when you're trying to uh, range trade in these more kind of vicious ETF type names, right? So I want to see what we do here. So, Kyle Burdett, I do agree I would probably take this short. And I have to say as well, thank you for bringing up this range trade earlier because even though we're down in this name, I had a lot of fun ranging this earlier. Something's uh, some going on with your mic. Tra- my mic, mic. Mic, mic, Yeah, okay. Oh, oh Ram Ram, Ram, Ram is fixing good. something. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, Ram Ram gives the approval there. <laughs> uh, we're all good there. Thank you so much, Nanya Biz. Good luck to you as well. Um, I appreciate that. Yeah, so so there we go. Go, go market. Goes by um, BCBC, thank you. But I actually feel pretty good about these markets and pretty energized I like that. by these markets as well. So let's keep going. I like it. Um, Adara, I have an announcement to make. We have a special guest on today. Neil's gone, so he won't be doing his lesson of the day. He's down in Florida enjoying uh, spring baseball, I guess, watching the, the Jays in Dunedin. So we have a special guest, the CEO of WonderFi, baby. Dean Skorka is going to join Brendo at the big desk today. They're going to be talking a lot about DeFi and finance in general. So make sure to hang out and put your listening cap on uh, for the, the guest coming up. That will be in a few minutes. Just want to preface that for you. Thanks, guys. All right. Let's have a look at now this DWAC trade. So we're long 42s. Now we're looking at wet or beak here at the quarter dollar as we incrementally make those higher highs and higher lows. It seems as if, though, we're going to look to encounter some resistance likely at that 42 and a half, owing to this consolidation area here. If we're able to break above that level, I feel then we should be really looking at that 43.50. We have three touches a little bit at that uh, 43 and a half. I'll be looking to take everything out there, um, or maybe not everything. We're gonna save a piece for the dream, uh, and we'll see what we get there. All right, we do have time. We are now ready for our guest of the day. Brendo is at the big desk, Ram Ram. Let me know if this is the appropriate speed. 
There he is, back again. Dean Skirka is president and CEO of Wonderfy. Uh, back in the house, good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah, it's uh, great to be here. It's, uh, it's an interesting time. Um, absolutely crazy market conditions that we've been dealing with over the past little while. We'll get into what's been happening as far as crypto is concerned, but why don't we start with just a, a, a brief overview of the company once again, for anyone that might be you know, hearing about Wonderfy for the first time, give us a, a high level look here. Absolutely. Everybody. Yeah, so Wonderfy is Canada's leader in the digital asset industry. We own and operate two of Canada's largest crypto trading platforms, Bitbuy and Coinsquare, and we also operate a global crypto payments business, SmartPay. Our efforts have been predominantly focused in Canada where, to date where we are a market leader. But we did announce this week that we are expanding in, into Australia and we're super excited about the, ex the opportunities for global expansion. Yeah, first time into uh, international uh, waters, if you will. We'll touch on that coming up. But uh, let's talk about this uh, crypto market because it's been on fire. I mean, you and I were just you know, talking off camera here before we went on. We're all the way back, you know, back to highs right across the board. Memes, uh, coins are going nuts. Trading volumes are going nuts once again. Uh, give me your thoughts here. Like, this, this market is impressive. Absolutely. We've certainly been impressed by the, the turnaround that's happened over the last, last six months. Certainly looking at the original catalyst being the Bitcoin ETFs, you started to see the conversation really start to evolve in Q4 last year. Platforms like ours are the beneficiaries of those, seeing trading volumes, signups, and activity around you know, the entirety of our platforms really pick up as sentiment improves, as the conversation grows louder around the digital asset industry. And certainly looking ahead, we see significant catalysts, whether it's Ethereum ETF and the conversation right. that's starting to evolve there. We have the Bitcoin halving upcoming in April. There's many catalysts to, to, for us to feel as though the conversation is really just getting started. And to your point, you, know, you look at volumes and the growth that we've seen there, the good times, you know, the times that we've experienced in the past are starting to really start to reflect. Yeah. Is there a, uh, ch is there a difference maybe? Is there something that's standing out a little bit differently this time than, than the first time around? Yeah, it feels more sustainable. You think about the shift over the last 18 months, you certainly think of the, the, the sentiment and the credibility that BlackRock, Fidelity, these household names really bring to legitimize the industry yeah. to a broader audience. And I think that's what you're starting to see, you know, even like we were talking about, maybe people are getting ahead of themselves or, or, or didn't expect things to happen as quickly as they've had. You know, we've seen Bitcoin run up to 70,000 in really quick order on the back of these ETFs. Yeah. You still have the halving coming up. There's many catalysts that, you know, for us to look forward to, uh, but we think that you know, the, the relative increase in price and awareness thus far in a short period is reflective of that broader shift. We think it's a more sustainable environment a more uh, regulated institutional environment that we're in now. Yeah. And Wonderfy really plays an important role there through our regulated crypto trading platforms. Uh, let's talk about the, the news this week. Uh, exciting, as we said, here's the uh, headline um, that came out earlier in the week. Wonderfy expanding into Australia for the first time. Uh, touch on the reasons, I guess, uh, for this market specifically and what's going to happen as far as products are concerned. Yeah, there's a lot to like about Australia. You know, they've shown very high adoption rates for the digital asset industry and created a really uh, robust regulatory framework around that to promote the, the businesses like ours to grow within their you know, jurisdictions. And so we think Australia is a really good, natural first step for us towards our broader global expansion. We have a clear track record of attracting volumes, users, and assets to our trading platforms. There's a lot that we have learned through the regulatory processes in Canada. There's a lot that we've realized through the product integrations and developments that we've had through the launches of staking and other products and services as well. And so we think the product's in a really good place. The company is in a really strong position with a really strong balance sheet that is able to support our growth plans. And we think the time is perfect to really enter into the Australian market looking at our OTC institutional offering as an entry point. From, from a global standpoint, where does Australia, I guess, come into play as far as you know, interest and volume and, and things like that? Yeah, so I think you, you pulled up the press release. Australia is one of the highest adoption rates globally for cryptocurrency, and so we think that makes it a really compelling market for us to look to. You know, there's a lot of commonalities between Canada and Australia as well that we think make the, the, the user acquisition and, and some of the marketing efforts in line with some of the work we've done, the experiences we have so far. And so we're really excited about Australia as you know, the first market that we will look to expand in, really finding markets that have a balance between a clear regulatory environment and a f market that we believe we can have an impact in. And so Australia is one of those markets that we're quite confident, wonder if I can come in there with our current products and services and have a real impact in that market. And from a 
investor perspective, understanding that there is a regulatory framework around those businesses to provide assurances to our investors today and our future investors moving forward. I, I'm sure there's uh, some viewers from that market watching right now. Um, as far as the timeline is concerned, has anything been announced as far as you know, when products can be expected? Yeah, we expect to have our OTC institutional offering in market within Q2, and we'll be announcing more around that you know, short in sh short order. And we've also indicated that we expect to have a more robust product and uh, suite uh, of offerings in market in Q3 of, of this year as well. Great stuff. Let's talk uh, financials coming up next week. A uh, company set to report. Um, there has been some uh, guidance come out. Give us your take. Absolutely. So as mentioned, you know, our crypt crypto trading platforms, Bitbuy and CoinSquare, are real beneficiaries of the sentiment and shift in the market that we've seen. These are crypto trading platforms that allow Canadians to easily access the digital assets that we offer. And so we expect you know, the run-up in, 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 in the in the industry to really reflect well in our financials. We put out guidance in January that we're expecting 12 and a half to $13 million of revenue in Q4 compared to 10 million in Q3. We think a lot of that's reflective of the change in sentiment around the market. Most importantly, we did also announce that we would be cash flow positive, EBITDA positive on a consolidated basis. Bringing these businesses together the way we had in a transformative way middle, in the middle, middle of last year is really important for us to identify the synergies and bring these businesses together and, and demonstrate the economies of scale to, to, to be able to demonstrate that through cash flow positive results in Q4, we think is a really strong signal to the market and a reflection of where we expect to be you know, in the year ahead. If anybody wants, uh, maybe anyone in this country that wants more information about the products, about where to sign up or anything like that, where would you send them? Yeah, absolutely. You know, social media would be a great start. WonderFi, uh, BitBuy and CoinSquare would all be yep. great resources and starting points. You know, both BitBuy and CoinSquare provide a lot of education, which we think is really important to the broader audience and making sure that more people understand the industry, the assets they're investing in. And so I would, you know, feel free to start both those cases, both, both of those websites or social medias being BitBuy or CoinSquare. Great stuff. Uh, check them out. WonderFi listed in Toronto here, guys. Uh, WNDR. Dean Skirka is president and CEO of WonderFi. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Thank you very much, Brendo, Yo, and our guest, great. Dean, What's CEO up? of WonderFi. Awesome. We all know that Kevin O'Leary is associated with that company. So shout out to the, those two there. Now, while, uh, while Brendo and our guests were dropping hot lines, we did get a couple of beak wetters here, Ram Ram. On KAVL, we were able to break through the quarter dollar. The next profit taker on this 301 long, we're looking at that third of a dollar at uh, $3.33. That's where we're sitting here uh, on. It's okay, take your time. I know that it's, uh, it's a whole thing up there. They got to switch screens and stuff. Yeah, $3.33. We're looking, I'm looking at taking it out there. But while we were talking, Microsoft decided, hey, it's midday, it's, uh, it's a bit of a bamboozler, let me move up big. And uh, here's what I'm seeing. I'm not sure if this is the headline, but Microsoft just you know, got off the schneid there at 40, a bit of a double bottom at 427.50, and now we're knocking on the door of 431. That is the IB high, the IB high is 430.82. We just broke through the half dollar, made it up to 60s it looks like, but now we're coming back down. Let's see if we hold 430. Here's the headline. Activision Blizzard um, with this market pump here on MSFT. I'm not 100% sure if this is the headline. So if you guys have a different headline for Softy, let me know. But that's what I see here on my blotter. Right now, a bit of a topping tail candle coming in there. We're going to have to see if this holds $430. But yeah, Softy looking to make midday moves here. Bless you, Katina, man. Um, and we'll see what we get there. All right, KAVL, right back up into that quarter dollar, but it's gonna have to cross a third for us to wet our beak. The other trade, DWAC, we're, we were able to take a nice little beak wetter there at the quarter dollar, we're long 42s. Now I'm sitting at the half dollar. Uh, I am trading in the SIM, guys. We are having some issues with respect to our execution today, so I'm just gonna keep this nice and uh, relaxed. And I'm long right now, $42 on DWAC, looking for what might be at the half dollar. Yeah, I mean, congrats to you there. Like, uh, 
this, yeah, this market, there's certainly so many um, opportunities, things to take advantage of. Kyle Burdett was just saying, you know, I totally missed that uh, short opportunity on the spy, which I did, but I wanted to get involved at 70s, uh, wait for like a little bit of calm here and see this continued move down. I'm going to wait and see what we do with 80, 85s, because that was an area we had a little bit of issues with earlier. As long as we don't break above that, I'm going to stay in this short. I will be eyeing what we do at VWAP, or not just because it's VWAP, because like I said, I'm trying to give a little bit less credence to chart action on these ETFs and more because the book was really interesting around 40s because I was involved in that name earlier as well. Uh, if we break below 40s nicely with the viciousness, then I will stay in this until we get to around these 20 areas. So that's what's happening in the SPY. Also, I'm in a Tesla short, so let's talk about that. Um, this is a scalp play. Uh, this is purely a range scalp, and I would like to, where is my NQ? There it is. Yeah, so the, I, the logic behind this was, I like that we had these uh, basically lower highs, lower lows. I initially liked that 174.60 area as an area to play the short with, because look at that support we had earlier. That moved so quickly, I just couldn't get involved. That's okay, on to the next one, as they say. And I do like this opportunity here. I don't love that that 9 EMA is curling up a little bit, but as long as we stay below this uh, 174, where is this, uh, 45s, we'll give this about 20 pennies. I'm cool to stay in this short. I'm gonna be taking some out at this 174, about a third of the position there, then I'm gonna be saving a piece for the dream. And that dream are these two beautiful candles <laughs> around 173.80. This is also a bit more of a momentum trade, which is a little bit uh, scary for me, but we're trying to take new opportunities. Let's see what happens. Also, um, thank you very much, Pal Burdett, saying look at the one minute, see the volume spike and reversal candle. That was the uh, entry single I was looking for. Thank you. So I really appreciate you like talking through this, Kyle Burdett, because I know you know Kyle loves the shorts, and so it's always really cool to see like kind of what entry levels different people are looking for and what uh, inhibits them to get involved. Yeah, I, oh, okay, I totally see what you mean here. We get up here, we fail the 524, and then we have this big red candle here. So thank you so much, Kyle Burdett, for pointing that one out to me. I, I did enter this late, which I, I don't love, but I do still think there could be some more short opportunities here. Uh, I just want to see us break <gasps> below 60s and then, of course, 40s around VWAP. So I'm not going to leave until we have the decisive break above 80, 85. The tap on Reddit. The tap means theoretical auction price on RDDT. That's the ticker for Reddit. It's on the New York. It will be launching shortly. The Katina man just put it in the chat. So technically, the IPO price is $34 a share, but that's not what you get. That's what the insiders get. It's going to open very soon, said the Katina man. So that's what the price is, right? But that's not what you're going to see when it first prints. Right now, the theoretical auction price on Reddit is $50, a $16 premium to the actual price, which, by the way, was on the high end. It ended up coming on the high end of the range. That wasn't a guaranteed thing that it would launch at 34 bucks. We were talking between 31 to 34. So the fact it opened up on the higher end and now the tap showing a lot of market exuberance there. Um, the tap, by the way, guys, is based on an auction process, right? So the more demand there is for the longs, the higher the tap keeps going. It's like a halt. Right When a stock halts, these small cap gappers that we're always trading, we're always talking about the tap during the halt period, and that is based on the auction system. Say it again, Katina Man? The, the, the Katina Man is going to put the, comp uh, the imbalance locator in the company chat. Thank you very much, Katina Man. So this is exactly what Sean is talking about here, here, right here. We'll look, look where it says rddt.ny. And then right next to it says buy. And then what we're looking at here is PV. That's paired volume, right? And so that is big size usually, and that's getting paired down. So the market maker or the exchange has to pair the, the buys with the sells. And so they have an imbalance now of 1.6 and a half million buy sides. The oh yeah, sorry, that's the, I haven't done this in a while. So the only imbalance left, sorry, excuse me, that's a paired volume. And they, they paired everything down because what's left, sorry, I, I misspoke there, is 71,000, 71.66,000. That's what's left to be paired uh, on the buy side. So you have 71,666 outstanding buy orders waiting to be paired, filled. So we always look at that number to see market exuberance. The bigger the number, uh, the more exuberance there. So I've got the Reddit, um, what's it called, chart on the side, but I'm flipping back between it and another one. So as soon as we have 
that open. I will let you know, Adara will let you know if she hears that as well. And uh, obviously we saw what A-Lab did yesterday. It was quite exciting. I personally don't know how to trade these IPOs. I'm not good at trading them, uh, but we can bring it to you live and let you know what is popping off. All right, DWAC, about 26 pennies in the money on this one, but you know this one awfully slow today, not with the same vigor that it was trading at yesterday, moving up bigly on, uh, on I guess, Trump's five wins. I don't know. He, he's, nobody's competing against the guy. Of course he's going to get the nominations. I don't get it. Anyway, he keeps posting about it on his Instagram. Now, looks like we topped out here on MSFT at that 4.30. We had a bit of a topping tail candle here, but the bamboozlement was real and it was fast and furious because we dipped right back down in 29 and a half, then got bought right back up. So it looks like 4.30 may be holding here, uh, at least for the moment, on MSFT. Uh, headline coming in midday here that uh, they will be dropping a new Call of Duty, a mobile game, by the way, vis-a-vis um, -vis Activision. So we'll see. J AMD's ripping, says the Katina Man. People have been trading AMD in the chat, Katina Man. Uh, AMD is up into 182. That is off a 177 and two-thirds bottom. Uh, it's going up into the right. It is now green on the day, one and a quarter percent. Still down since the bell dose, two and a quarter percent, but looking to recover. So keep eyes on these chips. We just finished talking about NVIDIA being awfully strong. Let me look here at what Jay Lee said. Sharif. The real issue for RDDT, same BS, small percentage of shares being released. Yeah, we've been seeing that a lot lately, ARM, uh, et cetera, and creates a bunch of bag holders, guaranteed it will jump a lot, and then Huadunk leaving bag holders. I really, hope in that, I really hope that doesn't happen, Jay, but you sound uh, quite, uh, you know, quite accurate in your description there. That has been something that's been happening a lot more lately where we see these companies going public, going to market, but only a fraction of the actual shares outstanding. The originating company, in the, in the case of Arm, SoftBank, holding about 90% of those shares and only leaving 10% to be traded in the public market. I don't happen to like that whole thing, but that's I, the market doesn't care about me. Dan Emmons, I didn't have... I didn't have getting long NQ18638 on my bingo card for this week, but here we go. <laughs> All right, Dan, where are we at here on the future? 18638, Dan took 638. All right, where was that exactly? That was down here. What did you see down here, Dan? 638. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm not sure what you were looking at that level. Let's, let's look at what Dan was looking at here. 1638, so three sevens. Must be seeing something there that I don't see, Dan, because uh, there's a whole lot of price action moving through that area, but no key areas of support or resistance. So let me know what you're looking at, my man. Elon, Sharif. Hi, Sharif. Thank you for mentioning FSLR earlier. I plan to get in about 151 on the daily chart. Why is it so shimmy topping tails? My man, it's been a tough time to be in the solar game. We've been now almost a year and a half with elevated rates and solar. The solar industry, I would submit to you, is very rate sensitive due to the prohibitive startup costs. I know those costs are getting better. They're down into the right, not up into the right, but still higher. And that causes, you know, uh, some hesitance by investors who are not gonna spend their own money, but looking to take out, obviously, somebody else's money to start up that, and that obviously comes with higher costs when interest rates are elevated. So we'll have to wait and see what the, the, better, the future better rate environment has a, a more positive effect on these names. I'm still in both trades, no new fills since I spoke last. Yeah, no, so I am. Um, honestly, I have to have a big shout out to, to big Kyle Burdett, as Sharif calls him, because I appreciate you talking through um, your, your kind of logic and approach to these counter trend spy shorts. I'm really proud of this. We took about, I think, slightly less than 10 pennies, but I'm just proud because I stuck with it. The first one, the timing was like, I don't know what I was doing. It's okay, though, because we got out when we broke above our area. We fulfilled our, I was going to say we fulfilled our destiny. That sounds really weird. I fulfilled my risk management plan, 
which is which is what matters, and so that was okay. Then I liked this uh, this 523.95 area. I said if we, I think we got it at 525.93, and I said, you know, if we break decisively above that 524 with the swiftness, I am getting out. I was trying to take it around this uh, 90 MA because I've noticed that's been a decent support area. Again, trying to use less chart and more book. I noticed in the book that we were struggling with getting 524, which is why I punched in on the short. And then I got out where I did because I noticed a little bit of pausing on the book. Now we're trying to push back up here again. But honestly, I'll take this long and short both directions if this keeps working. I have no qualms, uh, no qualms to be had in this in this kind of trade. But yeah, I, I, I really, I, I'm honestly really uh, happy that I'm just trying to take new opportunities. I am right on the day, to be really honest, but I do have uh, some AMD love was given earlier, and I also have some love to give AMD because I was saying this to Sharif, um, off camera, I found that this one has been given a lot of volatility lately. It's been fun to trade. Oh, my chart's not showing up, so I'll pull up my side chart for AMD. Um, where is it? There it is. So um, I liked this. I was scalping this 179 area earlier, just into that 179, 179.50. Then we bounced off this VWAP, and I like this. I like that this is also earlier an area we tangled with, so I got involved here. And I guess this is more of a momentum trade. Shout out to Sharif, who is a momentum trader, because this one, we had that continued move up, and I bought the dip, so I guess a bit more of a momentum trade. But I did get out entirely by the time we made that higher high. So pretty pleased as punch, I have to say. Um, and shout out to Joanna Brewster, if you're still in this name. I know you were all over this one earlier, so shout out to you. Congrats to you. This one's still kicking. Sean, I know, is in there as well. Some other people in the chat. I think Elon in the chat also in that one. So lots of people in there. Also, we did lose out on this Tesla scalp. We broke above. I, my, my chart kind of uh, went on the fritz, so I had to, to pull up a new one. So my lines are gone, unfortunately. But we broke above that 60 area. I got out. Now it looks like, and I mentioned this earlier, I was concerned that 90 MA could flip from uh, resistance to support. It looks like it has. So there could actually be some opportunities. This might be a little bit too momentum-ish for me. You know, this is not really a momentous time, perhaps, for me to enter. <laughs> if we get a little rangier, it might be. But let, yeah, we're going to have to see what happens. Honestly, shout out again. Thank you so much to Kyle Burdett for talking me through your approach these spy trades i think there might be something honestly just ranging the spy i'm okay with taking a couple pennies here there and everywhere i see dwac is still is dwac it's not back but it's still there it's yeah it's still i'm i'm break even on dwac just like i'm break even on kavl because this big boy of this small cap gapper big boy hua off that seven sorry three and a third all the way back into my entry at three it's holding the volume weighted average price and that whole dollar level, which is at three, but for how long? As I look at the book here, by the way, um, you know, I don't have all the gateways that I typically would have on my account. So you're looking at the book, you're not seeing the whole book. All right, that's just the way it is. On SIM, you don't see the full book. So there are some gateways that I don't see. So when I look at the size here, I may think that I see all the size that I, that I think I see at three, but there could be more. Uh, and the same thing goes to the high side. So when there's resistance uh, to the top side, I may not get the full picture. We'll see exactly here whether or not we hold three on KAVL. A big boy Hua doomed right back, but it held at that level. That's what kept me uh, from panicking. No, I'm kidding. I know. Yeah. That's going to be a meme. That's going to be a TV meme. Now. Right? I'm panicking. Yeah. All right. But uh, DWAC is no longer a valid trade, so we're going to get out of that one for about a 15-penny loser. Not even 10-penny loser there. Uh, but after taking out one, uh, one beak wetter there through the quarter dollar, this one is starting to curl back down. So not interested in that. This one, KAVL by, is what I mean by this one. We're going to have to be very careful with this, but I got to do the lesson. So I'm going to let this one go. And uh, we already have our stop in place on KAVL. So let's get to work here. We're talking today, guys, about divergence, pullback confirmation. We've been talking about pullback trading all week long and how to trade some of these pullbacks, especially when there is a discernible trend. Today, we're going to be talking about some technical indicators, more specifically, the relative strength index and the moving average converges divergence and how to use that specifically relative to price action to gauge a pullback, okay? So here, let's start the lesson. Imagine you see a pullback in a trend, but are unsure if it's a true buying or selling opportunity or just a fake out, one of the run-of-the-mill fake outs. Divergence pullback confirmation 
comes to the rescue, baby. It combines price action, so the pullbacks on the price action, with technical indicators to give you your trade, to give your trade, I should say, the extra confidence boost. So let's talk a little bit about how to use this. So first and foremost, we have to understand the concept of divergence. So what is divergence, essentially? Well, typically price action and the technical indicators I'm gonna talk about, specifically RSI and MACD, they typically move together. So, normally the price and a technical indicator move in the same direction. So an uptrend, an upward trend, would equal the price and the indicator going up. A downward trend would equal both the price and the indicator going down. But that's not what we're talking about today. Today we're talking about divergence between the indicator and the price action. So sometimes they diverge. In an uptrend pullback, the price will dip, but the indicator goes up. That's what we call a bullish divergence, okay? In a downtrend pullback, sometimes, however, the price rises, but the indicator goes down. That's what we call a bearish divergence. Case in point, right over here, okay? Here's the bullish divergence. So what we're doing is we're making lower lows and lower highs on the price, but when we scope out the RSI at the bottom, well, we see higher lows. We don't see any higher lows on the price reflected during that same period. So from starting from over here and going to over here where the trend line is showing you. We don't see any higher lows on the price. However, we see higher lows on the RSI. That is what we call a bullish divergence. A bearish divergence, quite the opposite. We start seeing higher highs and higher lows on the price, but we start seeing lower highs and even possibly lower lows on the indicator. In this case, thank you for pointing, uh, making this one the MACD Adair, the previous one was RSI. We wanna use both of these bad boys. In this case, the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, makes lower highs at a time where the price is making higher highs. They're diverging, right? So that's what we call a bearish divergence. So here's how, oh sorry, a divergence and pullbacks first. Divergence during a pullback can be a powerful signal and here's why, right? So during a bullish divergence in an uptrend pullback, the price dips, it pulls back, right? But the indicator rises. This is what we call a bullish divergence. This is suggesting to you that the price weakness might be temporary and it's hinting to you that there, this could be a possible buying opportunity, right? The RSI starts putting in higher highs. You don't necessarily get those higher highs on the price action. It's a leading indicator telling you, remember we talked about leading and lagging indicators? In this case, it's a leading indicator telling you the weakness in the price might be coming to an end. You may want to punch long in here, okay? Conversely, the bearish divergence. Bearish divergence in a downtrend pullback. The price rises, okay, but the indicator falls. The bearish divergence. This is suggesting to you that the price strength might be fading. It's also hinting to you that this might be a good opportunity to either take profits or to get into the shorts, depending if you're holding your long or not, okay? So that's what we're talking about. That's how you correlate the divergence aspect with the pullback. That's how you put them together, okay? That's what it's indicating. So let's put it all into action. So what step one. You identify the trend. Are we up and to the right, down and to the right, or are we horizontal? Are we in a consolidative state? That is what we need to determine first. Second, then you start looking at the price action. You wait for that pullback. Now, the pullback can come in many different forms. Yesterday, we talked about using Fibonacci's to gauge pullbacks. The day prior to that, we talked about key areas of support and resistance. So you have to use those methods to find out where the pullback is hanging out, okay? So first, you identify the trend. Second, you ID the pullback area. And then third, you're gonna sit on your hands and you're gonna wait for that divergence to come in between the price action and the technical indicator. Specifically, we're talking about MACD, RSI, and I think Michael Moss, I don't wanna put words in his mouth, but he'd probably tell you stochastics as well. He used it the other day, okay? Stochastics, another indicator for over, sold overbought um, indications, okay? So here's how to enter the trade, whether you're going long or short. So if you're going long, based on bullish divergence during an uptrend, you enter a long position at that key area of support, okay? 
But like I mentioned at the top, you need some sort of confirmatory um, technique, whether that is it holds at that level for three days or whether it doesn't break below it by 3%. So you need to figure out whether you're gonna use uh, a price action confirmatory, uh, con confirmation or a duration confirmation or a combination of both. You need to figure out which one you're gonna use. I'm giving you ideas. And what I mean by that is, okay, so you spot the key area of support on the pullback. You spot that key Fibonacci area that you want to, to pull back into, like say the 50%, okay? Great, it comes back to that area. Now, what do you do? You just punch long right away? Or you just go short right away? No, you need to wait for the price action to confirm to you. Now, if that's three candles that hold above that level or whether it doesn't break below that level by 3%, maybe it dips by two, it dips by one and a half, but doesn't go to three. There are so many different rules out there, the three-day rule, the 3% rule, whatever. Figure out something that works for you and then use it. So if you're going long, you're waiting for that level to come in, and then you're punching off. You're going short based on bearish divergence in a downturn pullback, you're entering a short position at that key area of support or the fit or resistance in the FIB. And then you're exiting the trade if the long trade breaks above that key area of resistance that you have identified or breaks below that key area of support that you've identified before, okay? So that's how you're exiting the trade there. And this is a great example, right? So your entry, at the next pullback after the moving average is here and your stop loss goes just below the low there at that consolidation top. Thank you for adding that in there. And as you can see here, we're putting in higher lows on the RSI, but lower lows on the price action. So we have that bullish divergence where the price is going down, but the RSI is going up. Here are some caveats. Be aware of the potential for false positives, whether bullish or bearish divergence signals that don't come into fruition. And always make sure you have, make sure you have confluence, baby, with other factors, indicators before entering a trade. And some of these indicators are less effective and more prone to false signals in uh, flat consolidative markets. You've heard me talk a lot about how moving averages are quite bamboozling during uh, consolidative markets. And here's a great case in point. You have bullish divergence between the RSI and the, uh, the MACD on the bottom and the price action over here. And then you end up getting bamboozled because, well, it moves sideways. So I, like everything else in trading, nothing's foolproof, right? And choosing your indicator. I've suggested to you that MACD and RSI are the good ones, but I think that you know, other chartered market technicians and even experienced traders would, tell, would say different. They'd say maybe look at stochastics or some others. Do your homework and figure out what works best for you, but the technique is the same. The price diverges from the indicator. That's all you're looking for there. And here are some bonus tips. Imagine divergence as a disagreement between the price and the indicator during a pullback Divergence suggests the indicator might be anticipating a trend resumption, giving you more confidence for your entry. I hope that helps. I know it was a mouthful, but uh, I think it was worth uh, understanding because I think price action indicator divergence is one hell of a tool to use if you can. Yeah, thank you so much for, um, for, for going through that lesson. I think it is really helpful to learn. And some people were saying as well, there are some examples of kind of pullbacks there and buying opportunities. I think someone said mm. Micron. So let's see what Micron is doing oh. in terms of pullbacks and buying opportunities. Shout out to our pal Obi, who you can see with Sean mm. around 2 p.m. and who was shorting this one earlier. Yeah, I think this is, yeah, I think more probably like a, a kind of a, a 9 EMA pullback for sure. There is that nice kind of uh, movement up here on Micron. Micron might have some range scalp opportunities. I don't, I don't know. I'll have to wait and see. Also, yeah, shout out again to, to Kyle Burdett for talking me through those spy trades. I should have taken this short when we failed at 524 and then we didn't. And then I tried to go long because there was um, there were a lot of opportunities there earlier to kind of uh, basically take that bounce off that 523.90. I wasn't really hasty about it enough in either direction. So we are, we're still down in this name, still down on the day, unfortunately, just being really honest here. My timing with Tesla has been atrocious. So let's talk about it because that's what we're here to do on how to trade, talk through trades. Um, and explain what we were doing with them. I like the short because we had, we were at this point having this nice little rejection out the 90 MA. We broke above that area. I identified that 174.60. I got out. Then try to get long here because we're holding this area of support. And honestly, part of why I got long was because I was like, you know what? I think we could go either way. 
And I was like, you know, because I'm leaning short, it's probably wrong and it's probably a long. So it just wasn't me trusting my own instincts because a lot of times my instincts are wrong. <laughs> we broke below, I got out. Not, not a huge loss there, nothing to talk about. Tesla's been so bamboozling. Yeah. As Sharif once said about NVIDIA, that bamboozlement is real with Tesla. <laughs> and I do agree. This one literally do not know uh, what to do there. Yeah, I think, you know, it is what it is. But you know what? That... You got, you got to roll with the punches, and right now the market punching me in the face <laughs> instead of uh, Sean's, you know, like fun little slap emoji. The market's like, Psh -psh -psh. but you know what? You fall, you get back up, Bang. and that's what we're here to do here. Uh, I said here twice, but that's okay. All good. AMD, um, still my chart's still being weird, so let's pull up my other P Pro 8 chart. Uh, look at this range. Oh, if we reject 182 again, I'll take it short, 181.40. I need to be finding range trades that work for me. That needs to be my focus, and I'm going to continue focusing on that. Also, uh, people are giving lots of love for your lesson of the day. Oh, the chat thank there you. Too, so shout out to that. Killing it, and thank you uh, so much that. as always for for going over those. Microsoft kind of doing something. Don't know if it's something I have a read on, but I do like that we have these little curls here. We have this 90 MA bounce. I don't have a read on it yet, but honestly, there could be some kind of range opportunity for 29.80 to 430.40. In all honesty, my only positive name to shore is AMD, so we'll see if we go back to AM Dance with AM Danger once again. Also, shout out to Elon in the chat mentioning Albemarle, oh. I believe, on the daily chart with that 125. Oof. This is nice, actually, intraday. This might be an example, though, of resistance flipping to support, or support flipping to resistance. We had this nice support on the 9 EMA. Now we're dipping below, but that's neither here nor there. Let's look at the daily for ALB, and let's see what it gives us. You did that um, on purpose. ALB. ALB. But yeah, this is... This... The Katina Man is still long AMD, by the way, guys. 178.27. He's holding that bad boy, and it's recovered quite nicely. He was quite right on the day, Dare. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, yeah, congrats to congrats to Sean. I'm sure he's dancing there. AM dancing. Yeah, Mira, I do agree. I think um, there is a lot of strength on AMD. I would be taking it a range short for 40 pennies to 181.40. Just to clarify that, I do agree with you, and I would have a really tight stop there. Um, but yeah, Albemarle's interesting because I think we did have that. You know, we're trying to get that pop off that 125 area. Let me zoom out a little bit more here. But I think, and there, there, there's just to me, I still see lower highs and lower lows. I'm gonna be really on. Or you know what? Or sorry, flat bottom and lower highs. I think we need to break above 140 for Albemarle. I'm not saying we can't get it, because if we look starting the last week, we have had a little bit of a, a trend to the upside, but to me, the overwhelming trend is lower highs with a flat bottom. I'm just gonna be really honest with that. But yeah, I mean, that, that's what we take on the chart. I think a nice higher high, an eclipse of that 140 area would be quite beautiful if you're looking for that. SMCI is exploding, someone says. So yes, let's look I was at just that. telling the Katina man, it's up ridiculous amounts. I mean, it's like up and to the right, man. It's 10%. It is. It's ridiculous. Well, also, oh, okay, oh my gosh, this, this look here. This is this is crazy. We we kind of fall below here, but we don't make a lower low. No, but that's we push the daily. Back up. Oh, that's the daily. Never on mind. The daily. They, thank you for. No problem. Yeah, I was that. like, that it looks better than that. I look was at so it, confused. Man. Yeah, you're right. better than that. Is there a chart that could look better, <laughs> Sharif? This looks like the blue sky setup chart. No, I'm oh, joking. It's no. not a blue. We've been higher. But I think this is a really nice look here on SMCY. Who knows? No, I'm joking. We'll actually see if there's a catalyst. Also, thank you so much to Stay at Home Dad for the super chat. We'll pull that up in two seconds. Um, SMCI, what I'm seeing is it's just kind of a, a sympathy play with Micron. But NVIDIA, always moving. Thank you so much to Stay at Home Dad for the Bang. 199 super chat. NVIDIA, cup and handle in the five minute. Let's look at the five minute on NVIDIA. Uh, right now I'm seeing kind of a similar setup to Microsoft. We dip below, then we curl back up. Honestly, to me, I think just the way, how, how rigid this chart's looking, and when I say rigid, I mean there's less roundiness and more gel formation though, because we did have that move down, curl back up, and then a little bit of a spout to the outside, right? So I see what you mean. I think to me though, either whatever pattern you want to call it, it does look certainly bullish indeed. Corey, thank you so much for the 99 cent super chat with the cool glasses emoji. You are a cool glasses emoji. And Sharif, what is happening over I here? I got shafted by DWAC. That's yeah, what gosh, happened. it did hurt you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it bamboozled me. It looked like we were breaking down. It ended up putting in a higher low. And there it goes as I took that one out at the break of the three-quarter dollar. Now it's a dollar higher than the three-quarter dollar that I got out of 42.74. DWAC looking at going green, only down 0.6%. Let me talk about NVIDIA though, because I have a script order to go along on the break of 925. I don't want to call this a triple top, but the closing print at the IB on the IB candle was below 925. So we've had three attempts 
9, 925 today. And this is the candle I'm talking about. This is the one that technically broke, $925. Uh, it went to 926.56, okay? But look where the closing print is, south. 923. So we spent very little time, and this is the five minute look, not like 15 or anything like that. Here comes Nvidia again at 925. So we double topped here on the five minute look. We broke back down to 1919, held the 20 period, and up we go yet again into 925 on NVDA. We're not getting prints even north of that at the moment. So the shorts or the sellers, whoever uh, is dancing with NVDA at this nine and a quarter uh, is keeping it down for now. So I put about a, a 20 penny spread between the stop and the, uh, sorry, the, the triggering price, which is the stop and the limit price, uh, because I don't want to use a market order and I also want to get filled. So the way that I do that is by increasing the, 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 the range, the spread between the triggering price and the limit price. And the way that I do that on my system might be different than the way that you do it on yours, but everybody should have that option. The stop price and the limit price. I know I have it on my platform over here. If you don't have it, you may wanna look at getting a different broker because you should have that kind of option. All right, all right, well, now we're knock on the door of 925 and I didn't get filled yet. Uh, let's see if we get the fill here. Now we're filled 925.05 long. Let's see exactly what happens on NVDA. Guys, I'm in the sim today. This is not real money, all right? So we're, we're taking reps. We have issues with, uh, with uh, prints today getting filled on NVDA. Let's see if we're, we're almost at 926 now. So NVIDIA is absolutely flying to the high side here. Let's see what kind of prints we can get it there. Yeah, let's see, honestly, let's see what Tesla does because have you seen a more bamboozling chart? asking for a friend. Um, what The one thing I've noticed that's consistent though is we can't break 174.60. I have a little order just waiting at the dock, ready to, ready to get going, shorting 174.60. If we break above 174.80, I'm out. It's a little bit of a larger position, larger for me, which still means it's relatively small, but it does allow me to kind of, you know, do get some scalp reps in there, lift those weights. And of course, thank you so much to Yoel Reina. Thank you so much for the $10 super chat. Learned more in four days than four years at school. Wow. Love thank you so much. That is such a nice thing that to say. That is very nice to and say. And we love y'all here. And we, we, love, we love being here and bringing the trades. And like I said, you know, really hoping to go live soon. So hopefully I will be able to bring that smoke up here. <laughs> love to see <laughs> love how that it. goes. But honestly, I think one of the things today, like I said, I don't have one positive name, but I'm very proud because I've mitigated my losses. There is nothing horrifyingly going against me right now, except like, I mean, Tesla is... is Spy may be a little bit worse. Tesla, one of my worst names, though, and a lot of that is just, you know, the timing here has been has been weird, and it's been Tesla. But the point I'm trying to make is, even with the names that I'm losing on, there, there isn't, like, a lot against me because I'm really trying to manage my positions a little bit better. Very good. That's really good. Because you have to good. learn a little bit every day. Pardon? That's really good. Thank you. I appreciate that. But, yeah, so, I mean, this Tesla, this, this range is... I'm going to use another Sharifism again, the bamboozlement. <laughs> it's so real. It's here. It's amazing. How is it? I see people. Flying. Waters. It's flying. Oh, I mean, but flying, I mean, that's not That's not a fair statement. I, take, I retract that because a dollar for NVIDIA is like 10 pennies on KAVL, right? That's the truth of the matter. Let's see if this one holds 925. We've taken out about half the position. Uh, it's got to hold that area. Otherwise, we're going to flatten it out here. Uh, you know, it was an area of resistance. That we know for a fact. Three times it touched around there, and it couldn't break it. So, you know, if you listen to the TA books, if you believe in all that stuff, typically what happens is resistance flips to support. It's not a hard and fast rule. As we come down back into 925 now, so just break even on this trade. Let's see if we hold this general level on NVDA. It's up two and a third percent. And as I look on my side chart, my goodness, SMCI, man, it's up 10 and a third and went up like another, uh, I don't know, $4 since I talked about it last. It's up $92.73 on the day. I, I'm, SMCI gives me automatic FOMO just by looking at SMCI on my, um, on my uh, what's it called, watch list on the side. You just get waves of FOMO coming in. Anyway, uh, let's see what people are talking about there in the chat. Mr. Long Shorts, would you say a negative divergence is forming on the MNQ 15 minute? Thank you. I don't actually have any of my uh, indicators up like the RSI or MACD, so it'll be hard for me to look at that at the moment while I'm trying to do this trade. Oh, NVIDIA is coming right back down now after now trying to hold 925 and then right back up it goes. So I'm going to send it to you while I put my stops below 924.
Yeah, no, do, yeah, I mean, with NVIDIA, do your thing, 21. I'm actually trying to get NVIDIA as well, but I'm setting this for a bit of a, I want to, weirder, I guess, point of entry. If we get to one, uh, 924.26s, I'm a little bit intrigued. Pretty small position, trying to take this pop up. I say that because look where we had that little, that little, previous little pop up earlier, right? I like this area. Also, you might think if Nvidia can get that low, what will it go, you know, going back, honestly, Nvidia, I think we could get that low and bounce, right? So that's why I want it. Maybe this is a bit too optimistic of an area, 924, 26, but if we get it, please just punch. I will be, I'm Yoda now, I guess. <laughs> um, and Nvidia is green, so that works. Also, if we break below that uh, 923.50 area, so we're going to give it 75 pennies. I just got I'm that out. now. <laughs> I just got that. That's actually funny. It, it was a really weird, yeah. obscure pun, so <laughs> makes sense. But yeah, uh, NVIDIA, will you let me, NVIDIA? Shout out to Sharif with the win, NVIDIA. I need to stop. But um, you know what doesn't need to stop is AMD. As Joanna Brewster said earlier, these uh, chips killing it with a viciousness up there here. So this is a massive look, um, massive move up here. Yeah, Mira, you, you definitely called it. Don't short AMD. I was going to yeah, see if it don't. continued the range, but AMD was like, what range, Adara? Stop trying to find a range where there's no range. Stop trying to make that happen. And then video continue, or sorry, AMD continued to fly. Congratulations to anybody in this long. One of those people being Sean the Katina Man. The Katina Man is still holding AM done from 178 and change, and now we're moving up into that 182 and a third. Uh, stopped out of NVDA as it did break down below 924, so we take a little bit of profit, negative on the name, uh, just putting it out there, negative on the name. It did break down below that 924. Let's see if it reclaims it. Guys, uh, let's see if it reclaims it at that... Uh, well, we'll see where is the key area of support here. So if we're assuming higher lows, right, then it shouldn't make its way down to 919. If it makes its way down to 919 and breaks it, that'll be the breaking of the trend. So it should stop in if it's going to continue up either where it's at right now or come down into 2, two or 2.1 two or even 20 and hold up at that level. What we're looking for, though, specifically is a higher low. Right, so we broke through that level, albeit on the one, and it was quite transient. You know, we spent like, a, I don't know, three minutes above 925, and then right back down we go again. So NVDA is NVD bamboozlement. There we go, and come, coming back down now below 23, here come 22s, and aggressive selling, already $4 off the top there, uh, as we did break 926, albeit by like 15 or 20 pennies. So NVIDIA on the way down. Let's see what this, where this one stops, but we're looking for higher lows and maybe look to get in on the back, uh, on the back end, as Neil likes to say. All right, let's go to KAVL because this one did hold three. So we did not stop out here as it only broke three by, I think, two or three pennies. Yeah, it only went down to 298. So I gave this one a bit of a buffer, thankfully, and I didn't get stopped out as it did hold that $3 level. But having a lot of trouble really reclaiming anything near the highs. I mean, how high did we get up the last time? We got up to a quarter dollar. This thing went up to almost four bucks. So I'm talking about KAVL. Now, we have a trade called the VWAP hold high at daybreak, right? And the whole point of this trade is it makes a big move right at the bell and then comes back in, holds VWAP. Can be a little bit above the volume weight average price, a little bit below. But the point is for it to trade at VWAP. And the whole idea of this trade is to build up your position near that VWAP area so that when the more liquid time of the day comes in, let's say 2.33, whatever, when the big kahunas come back on, the liquidity starts pumping back in, and then you actually test high of day. I've had several good trades on the, with this method before in the past. doesn't manifest and pan out every time, so you may get it, you may not. What I'll be looking for uh, to indicate to me that we are really heading towards highs, number one, a break of this nine to third, nine and a quarter, this top that we had over here, and then really to break through the half dollar to show me, okay, well, my next step, my li next line in the sand is gonna be around that four bucks or thereabouts. So we'll see if KAVL can continue to hold. Let's flip back to NVIDIA, see what this one's doing. Still at 923 or so, so we'll wait for maybe another green candle to come in here. Now, as I look at NVIDIA, the areas of retracements, there's two. The more aggressive retracements, come into the yellow dotted line, the yellow, dot, sorry, the yellow solid line. The yellow solid line is a 20 EMA on my chart. But that's not where the majority of the prints retrace to. As we watch, 
it making higher highs and higher lows. The majority of the candles bounce. I have that magnetic effect off the 10 EMA. So if we break below the 10 EMA, like we were, like looks like we're poised to do at the moment, we'll be looking at that 921 area because that's where the 20 period is. All right, so if it does find support at the 20 period, I likely will punch in uh, back into this area. But let's see exactly what it does with the 10 first, whether it holds a 10 on a closing basis, and then we'll look to decide at that time. But NVDA, you know, kind of a, the, the, the stock that never wants to stop going up, quite frankly. All right, what else we got? Ooh, Tesla looking flat bottom breakish. It's looking what? a bit boozling is what Tesla's looking like. Have you been trading it? Yeah, I mean, okay. you, you can't get a good read on that thing. It's right lower. Yet. Well, I mean, here, here, well, good. Yeah, you have a point. No question about that. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of defense at that 173 and three quarters, right? And then the, the rejections, they've all come. The good rejections have all come surprise, surprise off that 20 period. Whether it was here at 1130 or here at 1220, the t retracements into the 20 period, which is the yellow solid line on my chart, have been rejecting today on TSLA 1% down and trying to hold, for whatever reason, this random area of 173 and three quarters. So we'll keep eyes on TSLA. Oh, NVIDIA now below 323, looking to go into the 20 period. All right, so that's really all I have to say there. And KAVL. Uh, getting a nice bump up, back up. I'm going to take some profits here. How's the look over there? I mean, yeah, sorry sorry for getting all upset oh, there about good. Tesla. Tesla, um, you know, we're, they call it stressful for a reason. I'll mm -hmm. put it that way. I found it hard to read, but you're right. Like, the general theme of that one is weakness. It's just the timing of that. I just could not get right. You know, uh, Elon says the road will be 0 to 100, and uh, that stock would move 0 to 100 in ways that were deeply and bamboozling to this um, Reddit new tap, 49.50. Uh, Reddit tap, 49.50. Thank you so much to Sean and Sharif for that one. Also, I did get back in video, and I want to explain why. This first entry point, I don't even know what I was doing. I'm going to say FOMO. It was just, it was really not a well-educated trade. And I say that because there are people, you know, Sharif killed that momentum trade. I'm not a momentum trader. And I think I was like, oh, you know, I want to want to be part of the action. I want to be part of the movement. I thought my I had a good entry point. No, we basically ended up buying into a falling knife. This time, however, I was watching the book. NVIDIA has not broken decisively below that 922. So I was like, you know what, Adara? Just try to get it if we, if we hold this 923. I did. We're holding it not badly. If we break decisively below 922, I'm outy. I'm scalping this out. If we get above 923, 50, we're getting some out. If we get to 924, we'll be getting some out. So that is the look here for N to the V to the D and the A. Also, uh, sorry, just saw this one now. Thank you so much to Chase Bands for the $2 super chat. The proud husband of Mara, XO. Yeah, I remember last week, I believe you said you were going to marry Mara. Let's see how, how Ms. Mara's doing. Because you might have some competition. I know a lot of people love this name. Oh, this is, this is interesting. Look at this. Look at this level. Dara, you can't, you can't get so excited about this, but, but look at this 2220 area. We see this beautiful chop and churn range. Then we reject, we fall below, then we pop right back up and look where we're dancing now. If we break above this, I think, you know, we'll definitely see a little bit of strength because this was certainly an area where we had a little bit of a trouble getting below, uh, above or below. It was a little bit of a roadblock. Now we get to that 2240 area. And then we see again a little bit of a bottom. I don't want to say flat bottom break, but certainly an area of support from which we uh, then broke below. So I think there's certainly um, something here. There's something I want to keep an eye on. Also, NVIDIA, uh, part of, you know, we did get a beak wetter here. We have half the position left. I took this with a bit more shareage than I did, or share size, a bit larger position than I did the first one. The first one wasn't particularly um, a large position just because I wanted to really make sure you know, especially with that being a bit more of a breakout trade, that this was my style. This time, again, still not a huge position, but bigger than position numero uno, because I wanted, you know, to, to kind of be a little bit more comfortable. This is a trade that I'm more comfortable in as well, because I was able to watch that book a little bit longer, see how these levels hold. I don't know if we're going to get filled here at 924s, but if we do, I'm there waiting, NVIDIA. Let me out. We got out of NVIDIA. Bang. Pleased as punch. You know what? I'm more pleased, because after that, that first 
trade didn't work. Instead of, you know, Lisa I didn't. Dara. I, thank you. I, I didn't want to take this as a, a revenge trade, right? And I know as someone put it like very astutely and accurately in the chat, you know, avenge, avenge and revenge do mean the same thing, right? So I say avenge trade, they mean the same thing. When I say avenge, though, I think it's more just like, you know, doing it for yourself. Instead of out of rage, you're doing it, I guess, out of a, a still a sense of revenge, maybe. Like it's not a perfect analogy, but it's one that I find helps me reconfigure it in my mind to say instead of just going in because you're upset, you're going in because, you know, the stock, you and the stock had kind of a, a, a contemptuous relationship and you want to amend it and you want to, like maybe it's an amend trade, sure. maybe it's that. But also either way, NVIDIA, if you're not going to go above 924, I'm going to do the old man finger, we might have to execute ourselves a bit earlier than intended. Also, I don't know if you saw this message in the chat, but the execution issues, um, there's a message in our, our oh, chat. Oh, thank you. Yeah, issues, I will. So, I will look at that. Um, yeah, I just thought put that out there but yeah i have to say I, I think sometimes the trades that i'm more proud of are the ones where the market kind of knocks you down you just have to get back up brush that dirt off your shoulders and keep on climbing uh, and with that being said nvidia i think we're gonna have to say goodbye to you uh but that's okay oh i accidentally added to this position ah okay fat finger moments that's cool we're gonna be getting out of all of this um post haste how many shares do i have in here uh there we go goodbye um, but also, uh, so we should be getting that filled right away. There's something else I wanted to look at here, and I do not remember uh, what it was. Oh, yeah, the spy. I know, um, yeah, shout out to Kyle Burdett. I know was in that spy short earlier because the spy had a beautiful little um, move to the downside. Down. Look at that big move down. We bounce off VWAP. This is, yeah, I mean, honestly, this is a name that I found a little bit bamboozling, but I'm still really proud of myself for trying to trade this a couple times and having some successful scalps. So shout out again to Kyle Burdett for kind of sharing some of the levels that he looks at and that guide him through his spy trades or, his, or in general, he said, like the counter trend shorts in general, just looking for that big volume spike, as you saw kind of around here, to prove that there is some oomph um, in a counter trend direction. So I do really appreciate that. NVIDIA. Um, you know, we're, we're going to have to see what she's doing. I cannot believe I accidentally added into that position. Big yikes, but, um, you know, we're, we're going to get out. We're going to extricate ourselves and, you know, beauteous times indeed in these markets. This has been such a fun trading day. And Reddit's going to make it even spicier. What are you uh, looking I'm at looking, over here? I just got back into NVIDIA. I'm looking to defend that 922 area, a beak wetter at 923.50. But Brendo sent me this. So anybody who follows, um, what's that guy that does reviews? MKD, MKD, Marquise. Marquise. What? Yeah, what's? I his? don't know his last name. Yeah, Mar Marquise Brownlee. Thank you, Ram Ram. I, you. It's funny. I you think I would know because I follow his channel, but he did a review on the Cyber Truck after having it for I think a few months, and anybody who's watched it knows that this panel gap. What, like, this is not a door ajar, guys. This is a legit panel gap there. Uh, yeah, it was right, Chile Nightmare. That's, uh, that's <laughs> super ill. I have OCD, okay? And Adara's lines, her, her yeah. lines were not straight on her chart. I had to show her how to make them straight because every time I looked over there, they were crooked and it drove me nuts. Can you imagine how much of this would drive me nuts? That's why they didn't let me in the car. Ram Ram, you speak sense, woman. <laughs> Absolutely. No, but this is uh, for real, though. And that Marquise guy, I don't know. I'm, I'm joking about this, but he, he put Fisker under. Yeah, no, Because that review of the ocean was, you know. He's well-respected, though. Yes, and that's so. why, because he can say stuff and people listen. Because he knows right? what he's talking about. He does. Uh, so we, we wet our beak there on NVDA at the 50-penny uh, area. We made, uh, we're long 9, to, again, guys, in the sim, 9.22.88. Looking for that higher low to hold up, okay? So we made... This higher low at 922 and a quarter, looking for that area to hold up, possibly to test 925 again. It's NVDA, so anything can happen. It may not jive with TA or may not give a, you know what about your areas and whatever. So we'll see whether we get that move back into 925 on NVDA. Looking for, I already wet my beak. I'll probably wet my beak here at 923, let's say 90, okay? just south of that 924 area. Took some more profits out here on KAVL as it came into that 15 penny area. This is doing that VWAP hold thing, but you know, it's really, it's really squeezing me for patience here. So we'll see whether or not we get that. Scott H, shout out to you, my man. You were saying Reddit about to trade. We had the Katina man updating us consistently about what the theoretical auction price is. That is the tap. I know the, the Reddit, the actual IPO price 
It's up again, Katina Man. Okay, so uh, can we get the new price? No, I'm just doing thumbs up. Oh, thumbs up. Got it. I thought it meant like the price went up. <laughs> there he is. Shout out to Shot. Um, yeah, as soon as we. A? 4950. That is what the tap is. We know that the actual IPO price that the insiders got to buy at is $34. That was the high end of the range. It was supposed to be 31 to 34. The stop on AMD for the Katina man on his long that he's long at 178 and change, he's looking to take that out on the break of 181. That's about 80 pennies from where we're at. If it breaks that, Katina man's gonna cut the trade there. So if you're following along with him, keep your eye on that. Now, I'm really upset about this DWAC trade, guys. Uh, DWAC, wow, what a recovery. Can you, can you believe this? Can you believe this, man? And I got out here and, and then it, yeah, that's really frustrating. And this is the area that I was thinking about too. This uh, 4350 area. And again, we talked about this owing to one, two, three troughs at that 4350. Forget about 4350, look more like 4450, baby. This is on the way up. DWAC is now up three and a third after being down like three and a third, I think. So nice V-shaped recovery here for uh, Digital World Acquisitions Company. And it looks like it may want to take 45 because now we're at 44.50. So lots of strength coming in for whatever reason. Now over 4% here on DWAC. DWAC coming in strong, looking to recover off uh, some earlier weakness there. NVDA still break even on this trade as we dance at that 922 double eights, looking for a higher low. If it makes a newer low through 922, <coughs> cutting it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, that's a great entry point, I have to say, um, killing it Hopefully. on that. Also, what I decided to do was, because I did fat finger into this, and I was like, I dare, oh, wow. wait, we just dropped. Oh, my gosh, I have to get out of this. Yep, lost um, on that. That's trouble. That is, yeah, I mean, talk about trouble here. You know, I'm kind of disappointed, because if I had been Same. able to get, oh, we still have more of this. Okay, Adair, I love when that happens, when you don't realize uh, what your position is. Cool, buy. Uh, oh, no, I just tried to buy into that. What am I doing? Um, I love, I love, honestly, you always learn a little bit uh, every day in the markets. So I just have to like, you know, honestly, if I hadn't fat fingered um, actually into this, it would have probably been an okay trade, but you don't learn anything from the trades that go perfectly. No. You learn from the trades that bamboozle you, chew you up, spit you out, throw you um, into the garage. They I don't know what analogy really this is, true. but honestly, I did learn a lot from the stress of this. Honestly, I'm still happy even with those fumbles out. We still didn't get bottom wick. And um, we might end up getting bottom wick, but that's okay. I'm still happy I took out some of this position. Worst save of the day for me by far. But honestly, that means things can only go up. You have to stay optimistic in these markets. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and that's one of the biggest things I've learned. And yeah, I just... Always happy to be, be trading here with everybody. Hope, I hope Kyle Burdett got a short on that. I'm just going to say in something in the market there, I'll say that. But Big yeah, Kyle. just happy to be here. Yeah, I mean, I think he did because I just saw him say, come on, spy, get low. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I would probably say that, that nice short there. Tesla broke down below that flat bottom. So that Ooh. flat bottom at 173 and change that we were talking about. That big drop on the NQ precipitated that flat bottom break, baby. It goes right through 173.75 like it doesn't even matter. In fact, it dropped a dollar below that 172.83 now LOD on TSLA coming into support level one, trying to close above 173 on this candle here. But Tesla, a lot of weakness, one and a half percent to the negative. Forget about these price increases. So what, says the market? We're selling you off. We're not down with EVs. And now we're hearing about Bentley wanting to revamp its entire look at going electric. So they're like, no, nah, okay, the market's kind of dried up a little bit for these electric vehicles. We're not getting the same subsidies from governments anymore. Interest rates are high. Nobody wants to finance these things and pay well, for Bentley, you're going to be paying like three, four thousand dollars a month. But anyway, it's not just Jaguar now. It's not just Jaguar. It's not just Bentley. It's BMW. It's Mercedes. All these companies, legacy companies, Ram Ram, they are rethinking their whole electric uh, push. And so we're going to have to see how these EVs do, man. It's been a tough look. And there's another thing going around too. Like when I when I look at this social media stuff and I do a lot of reading. There's a difference between Tesla and EVs. Tesla is kind of like almost like the iPhone of EVs. That is true. You know what I mean? People want to drive a Tesla. They don't necessarily want to drive an EV. And let me tell you another reason. There's so many accessories, Adira, for your Model Y, 
for your Model 3. For example, Model Y and Model 3, they don't come with a center screen. So you've got to look. You, they don't what? come with a driver's screen. They come with a center screen. So you to look at everything on the right. So if you want to look at your speed, you want to do this, that, or the other. The Model S and the Model X, they come with a center screen. So what the aftermarket people did, they put in a little like heads-up display for you. Made completely customizable for the Model Y and the Model 3. So many aftermarket accessories coming out for exactly. Teslas because so many people have them. You're not going to get that with other EVs. That's true. You know what I mean? That's a really good point. I appreciate your analysis of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that's... And honestly, um, there was an analyst... I believe was it Morgan Stanley um, that agreed that earlier today I, I don't I don't think it was on my Benzinga either I just saw it um, on Twitter someone they put the letter out there let me f see if I can find it but they basically said that they're still bullish uh, Tesla although there are near term issues with EVs they made that very clear they said they're still pro Tesla because um, they said that. Uh, Oh, is this it? Um, no, I still can't find what it was. But they basically said that they think um, that Tesla versus Tesla and BYD are the strongest EV competitors. So 100%. they said long term, they still think those guys will, will be shiny. I agree. Uh, and they'll they'll end up winning out there. Also, I don't know why I said shiny. That's a weird. They'll be shining through. I guess is what I mean by that. I love what thirteen twenty Wolf wrote in the chat. <laughs> Completely contrary to what I was saying. Look what he wrote. Gonna put a Tesla emblem on my trash bin. Ouch. Ooh. That is funny, though. But it I don't is know funny, if I but agree. also ouch. Yeah, ouch. Oh, sorry, Elon. Um, all right, a couple of uh, hammer candles here, bottoming tail candles showing up, whether on Tesla over here, whether on NVIDIA over here, whether on the Fuge. This big move down that precipitated me getting uh, stopped out of NVDA just got bought up aggressively by buyers, both on the Fuge, both on NVIDIA, and even to some extent TSLA here. It didn't really happen a whole lot on any of the other MAG7 names. I'm talking about Google, Apple, Amazon. Uh, you didn't really get those bottoming tail candles here. It was more reflective on these three, uh, this backwards L, NQ, NVIDIA, and TSLA here on my charts. So we'll see if we can put in a new five minute candle to make a new high. Uh, for NVDA, that could precipitate me back into this trade. Already negative on it, trading in the sim today, though, guys, as we are having uh, execution issues on the floor here. And uh, apparently, there's gonna there was already an update at one o'clock that that they were gonna they were gonna terminate everybody's executions. Um, yeah, thirteen twenty four. I love all that is Elon, but I hate, but the hate is too much for TSLA. I respect that, man. I respect that. You know, uh, Tesla, the stock is not for everybody. I don't know if you're talking about the company as well or what there, but uh, Snizman, Sheriff, why did Micron explode? <laughs> Brendo. I love what we you have executions. Woo! Ex executions back on the floor, baby. All right, so maybe we'll switch here. Um, in case you're wondering, Micron had earnings yesterday, and they absolutely blew away earnings. They're being bought hand over fist by NVIDIA. What's the tap, Katina, man? The tap now on RDDT, the upcoming Reddit IBO. $48, that is a premium of $14 on top of the actual price. The actual price of the IPO, 34 bucks on the high end of the range. We'll let you know exactly when that bad boy starts trading. It's one o'clock. We have three more hours, New York Stock Exchange. Can we get a launch, please, any day now? Um, so we'll wait. We'll find out exactly when we, uh, we get that launch. We'll let you guys know there. I love that you are talking to the New York Stock Exchange. Sometimes you talk to stocks, but Sharif's like, that's not enough for me. I will talk to the New York Stock Exchange. Yeah. So um, also this is really funny. I have no idea if this is a coincidence or I heard this wrong, but I was listening to this song today on my way to work and someone said that it was like a rap song. Someone said something the equivalent of like selling off like Birkenstock. I'm sure I heard that wrong, but it reminded me of the Birkenstock IPO, especially on today's momentous Reddit IPO day. That Birkenstock IPO was, um, I, I tried trading that, didn't work out, but honestly, I'm really happy that I took it because I, I do feel like I learned something from it. And that's something is IPO trading is not for everyone and you might get rinsed. Uh, but still still a huge learning lesson for me, for sure there. Also, um, Tesla, uh, this, I'm not in Tesla, I'm in AMD. I'm taking this AMD range, I mentioned this earlier, I love that 181, 40, 180, 180. I didn't get the bottom of the range. I got in like 180, 150s, took out some of it, added back in. We look like we might be crumbling a little bit as long as we hold up well along this 180, 120 area. I will be 
please just punch. But I think I'm, I'm probably going to have to stop uh, adding and re-adding here. I'm just going to try to get everything out here. Should we get back to 180, 180s? Just because this is not the type of range that I have a lot of patience for at this juncture. And also, AMD is kind of like, oh, Adair, you might not be welcome here anymore because it's trying to break below that 180, 120. So I might have to extricate myself from this trade before we get to uh, our lesson, round three. How many shares do I have in here? Um, there we go. So there we go. Uh, we're going to be leaving this guy before, um, oh, we might have to get out of them. That's okay. Um, before we get to uh, the lesson, which is, of course, going to be pullbacks. If we see Reddit, the lesson will stop and we will Yes, ma'am. I'll let you know right Reddit. away. Yeah, thank yes. you so much. I really appreciate that. Yep. Um, but time for divergence pullback confirmations. And I'm so happy I have the slide on the, on the correct slide as well, because sometimes I'll have this open. It'll be like the wrong slide. We're on this. We got this. Imagine you see a pullback in a trend, but you're not really sure if it's, an un, if it's a true buying or selling opportunity or if it's a fake out. Divergence pullback confirmation can help you and it can come to the rescue and it combines price action pullbacks with technical indicators to give your trade an extra little uh, shot of confidence. But you want to understand divergence first, right? So in regular confirmation, the price of, and the technical indicator are... Um, like RSI or the MACD are gonna move in the same direction. So an upward trend will have the price and indicator go up and a downward trend will have the price and indicator go down to the downside. Down. But divergence is when things get a little bit funky. In an uptrend pullback with divergence, the price is going to dip, but the indicator will go up. So it shows that even though the price is down, there is still some bullish divergence present and there might still be more of a bullish move. In a downtrend pullback, the price rises, but the indicator goes down. That will be a bearish divergence. And we have some examples of both of these. Um, this regular divergence, you have the move, price pushing down, but momentum does not follow. Thank you to Trading Setups Review for this graphic. And then in MACD, this is going to be a bearish divergence. Bang. So look at this. We have this move up here, higher highs la -dee 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 -da, for the price, <laughs> but the MACD making lower highs. And as you can see here, a sell, a movement to the downside. So that I like that we had, you know, I wanted to have a little bit of examples of both. Also, I want to note here, this is a USD JPY chart. Someone I think yesterday or the day before was asking, can we use these strategies as Forex as well? And yeah, that's why I wanted to have some Forex examples on here too, because I, you can, as long as you know, have other confirmations, which we've always talked about, don't go out on a limb because of one indicator. Make sure you have your whole stew of indicators before you enter a trade, but you can use this with Forex if you're looking for some kind of sprinkling, inkling to enter a trade. Divergence pullbacks, uh, divergence and pullbacks, how does this work? This could actually be a really powerful signal because bullish divergence and uptrend pullback is basically we're gonna have the price dip pullback, but the indicator rises in a form of bullish divergence, which suggests that the price weakness could be temporary and that hints at a potential buying opportunity for you. Bearish divergence in a downtrend pullback is also really important. This is when you have the price rise, so that would be a pullback in a move to the downside, but the indicator falls, so that's show a sign of bearish divergence. We could have more downward movement on the horizon and the price strength might be fading, which gives you a bit of a selling opportunity. Putting it all into action, how do you put it together? First, you wanna identify the trend. Identify the uptrend or the downtrend and then try to spot the pullback. If you see a price retracement against the trend, that is gonna be the pullback opportunity. And then you wanna look for divergence. Does the technical indicator like the RSI or the MACD show some divergence showing the pullback? If so, you're gonna be wanting for bullish divergence in an uptrend pullback um, or bearish divergence in a downtrend yeah. pullback is what you're gonna be looking for for your point of entry. Now, how do you plan your entries and exits? Gonna be similar to the basic pullback, actually. If you're going long, you're gonna be doing so based on bullish divergence during an uptrend pullback. That's when you're gonna enter a long position. Going short, you're gonna be looking for bearish divergence during a downtrend pullback, and then enter a short position. Now, for exiting the trade, you're gonna make wanna exit when the price breaks above resistance in uptrend or below resistance in a downtrend. And here's a fun example I found. Obviously, this is totally an example, but uh, here's an example here on this chart. It's not labeled here, but it is a chart. You have this move to the downside, but you see, hey, the RSI is actually moving up. Mm. What will I do? You're gonna maybe wanna enter the long here uh, when you have this next kind of pullback. You're, and here, here's an example, you can put your stop loss below the pullback. Of course, we're not telling you what to do. You're gonna wanna do um, on, your own, on your own terms, but here's just one example of how you might wanna plan this ahead of time. Then you target new highs and that's where you get out. So I think this is a really clear example that also is kind of a culmination of a lot of what we've been chatting about with regards to these profit takers and points of entries with these types of trades. But of course, with everything, there are some caveats. Be aware of the potential 
for false positives, so that's bullish or bearish divergent signals that don't come to fruition. You always want to make sure you have confluence with other factors and indicators before entering a trade. Speaking of confluence, you're going to see OB in 45 minutes. But also, <laughs> you also want to keep in mind trending versus flat markets because a lot of these indicators are going to be less effective and or more prone to false signals in flat or consolidative markets. And of course, use that how you will. I know there was someone in the chat a while ago saying that they actually there is a way to use some of these indicators in consolidative and flat markets. So figure out what works best for you. But here's an example. I found this from Investopedia. I really liked it because it shows examples of both. So first, you have this false move. You have this upward trend, but you have bearish divergence, right? And then you have the sideways kind of trend where the MACD doesn't really know what to do. So I really like this example. So I put it here as an example of two of the ways that there are some caveats that you want to be careful about with this type of trade. Choosing your indicator is also really important. Oh, Reddit's it's open. open. Reddit's it's open. open. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, I, I switched back to live, guys. Uh, so now we actually have the book here. Uh, everything is kosher on this, and we have all the gateways. So keep your eye here uh, on this trading. We have the one-minute chart. We opened up Katina Man, I believe, at $47. We dipped into 46 and change. There goes 48. Here comes 49, guys. Uh, 49 coming in, 48 and change. There we're, All right, let's keep an eye at 49. Size at 49. Uh, it's getting eaten through now. There, it's gone, Ooh. actually. Uh, so we'll keep eyes at that whole dollar level. Right back into triple eights. There goes 49 to the high side. Let's see if we can hold above that 49. Oh, wow. This is nuts. Um, looking for size. Where is size? Okay, so the biggest size I'm seeing here is at 50. That's fine. That's a little bit from where we are at the moment. Uh, 49 and a third is any size moving up with us. Let's keep our eye on the bid as well. We want to know if we're going to get backstopped if this thing flushes. So keep your eye on the tape here and the book to see if we have big size at either resistance or to support us on the way down. Big boy size, I see about 1,250 lots at 50, at that $50 level. Here comes 50, all right, and there goes the size, getting eaten up uh, when we reject. So, wow, wow, bamboozlement central. Now there's an iceberg at 50. There's not enough size to justify the rejection. Let's just see exactly what we do here. A lot of excitement. I feel like an auctioneer. I ain't trading this, baby. <laughs> this is too nuts for me. Uh, you can. Uh, uh, should we? Should we cover? I mean, I don't know what to do here. There goes oh fifty. Oh my god! Here comes fifty-one, baby. Fifty percent to the good at the moment here. Let's see. Is there size at fifty-one? Yup. Every whole dollar level, there seems to be size. And there goes 51, Katina Man, on the way up 51, 52% now. Uh, wow. I was talking to some traders back there, and they were asking me if I secured shorts for this because, well, the trade goes both ways, guys. It looks like we're going to have a lot of zigging and zagging. Let's see exactly where we end up. But we're already at $52, and we're eating up that size as well. It looks like as if we're getting there goes 52 to the high side, baby. A lot of strength coming into this name. And this is being watched by a lot of other companies. And there goes 53 because they want to know whether there's exuberance, <laughs> whether this is going to be well participated or not. They don't want to launch their IPO if there's not excitement, if there's not participation. So let's see exactly how this one does today because I think it might foreshadow the rest of the year for this IPO market. Very, very good start to the IPO right now on RDDT. Yeah, I mean, I have to say, why didn't Birkenstock do this? No, I'm joking. I'm joking. It's just, this is the thing Remember? is, all IPOs are, right, because I, I got into Birkenstock, and Birkenstock did not want me there. And that was before I, I was shorting, because there was a period early on in my in my very young trading life where I did not short. But yeah, I mean, wow, shout out to anybody bro. involved in Reddit. This is a crazy look. Shows no two IPOs are alike. Reddit above 54. I can, like, <laughs> stop the lesson if we just no. want to look at Reddit, like, because this is a, a crazy, this is a crazy, we're at 60% yeah, of the yeah. upside. We're almost $55 yeah. on You know what thing. I've noticed so far? When we break a key level, we dip below. And, and the then 50, we come back. Yeah, and the 54, we're doing it again. So you break the level, like say that key, hold out a level, 54, 53, 52, whatever it is. You dip below it, and then you're going to retake it again. Here comes 54 again. So back up to 53, 50 and change. Let's see if there's size. I'm not seeing enough size backstopping the move, and that's what keeps me worried. Let's see. Here comes another Crazy. attempt at 54, Adara. New size has reinstituted there at the whole dollar level. Can we break that size? So lots of uh, lots of Alvin yelling, dump it. Vin says, woo-hoo. That's pretty accurate. <laughs> that's what it feels like watching this. I can't imagine what it feels like trading it. Oh, my God. It's a nail biter. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Katina, man, are you in this? Can we? Uh, uh, what? I tried to punch 50 long. The Katina man tried to punch at 50. He missed there. There was all sorts of uh, volatility. 
He's going to wait for it to settle down a little bit. And I hear some clapping. I don't know if that was Brenkles back there. But uh, it looks like somebody's excited in the back and pleases punch for these people, man. I mean, that's what we're here for. Well, there's a lot of swearing on the floor now. It's all good. I'm, there goes 55, baby. 50. There goes 55. Here comes 56. Very exciting for something that I'm not involved in. But yeah, you know, Nary, will you see a stock trade like this live unless it's an IPO? 56 incoming, 56 goes, baby, to the high side. Here, I guess 60's coming in, Katina, man, because we're now up 65% on the day. And there's all sorts of bamboozlement. I'm getting tired of talking. Gosh, I love the stock market. Thank you so much for covering that, Sharif. Shout out to Sharif, the stock engineer, killing it. Also, before we go back to the lesson here, thank you so much to B. Davis saying, girl, you're awesome. I always love your energy. Y'all are a great pair. And I mean, Sharif and I, I really just wanted to read that because I mean, Shetta, I feel like we have a really good time. I don't want to speak for both 100%. of us, but bringing these no, markets I'm, I'm, to you I'm going to say I have a bad time, Adara. That's what I'm going to say. Like, I'm going to say, no, this is horrible. I just realized after right? I started talking that I, I backed you into a corner, and I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> No, she can tell us, Sarkas. She knows now. She knows. That she knows time, now. yeah. R Rumin's also, when, when Sharif's not here, Rumin, Rumin is my sarcasm yep. monitor. So I really appreciate it. I have two <laughs> people who dabble in sarcasm to help Woo! me show me the way. So much appreciated. But also, what is always appreciated is choosing the right indicator if you're involved in these pullbacks to bring it back to the lesson. Yep. Thanks again to Sharif for killing it with that stock engineering. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, RSI and MACD are really popular choices, but there are others you can talk about, or not talk about, we're talking about them, but others that you can use for your trading. You want to experiment and find what works best for you. Also, bonus tips. Imagine divergence as a disagreement between the price and the indicator. They're fighting. They're in a bit of a scrap. They need some time away from each other, right? They need, you know, to go take a walk or, you know, do Sean's walk, talk, and stock. Maybe. Yeah. And during a pullback, divergence suggests that the indicator might be anticipating a trend resumption. And that can give you some more confidence in your entry. By combining pullbacks with divergence, you can possibly improve the accuracy of your pullback trades, give them an extra little layer of confirmation. So that is the lesson uh, of the day for the last time there um, <laughs> today. This is what what a market. I like, Honestly, I have to say, I'm so happy to be here looking at the markets every day because that was one of the craziest things I've ever seen. I was that not was involved nuts. in Reddit. Yeah. What? Oh, my gosh. I'm Pitbull to... saying 11 million in volume. Insane. Yeah. Don't disagree. Yeah, where is the vol? Yeah, eleven and a half million. I, we're probably going to see easily fifty or sixty by the end of. Uh, well, no, I don't know. Maybe that high, but we only have another three and a half hours of trading. So I don't know if we see that. Uh, sorry, two and a half hours of trading. Excuse me. Uh, that much. Uh, that much volume. I'm keeping eyes here. Look, I want to get involved. I really do. But it's going to have to be on a dip trade. I'm just not going to punch willy nilly at the highs. That's a. Uh, you know, it's just a 50-50 bet. Just go black or, uh, black or red on uh, roulette. I mean, this is what I feel. I don't know how to trade this. If you guys know how to trade this, fantastic. To me, the, what I feel I could kind of do is put a dip trade at a whole dollar level. I was going to put 54, right? And then it just dipped aggressively below 54 there into 53 and a half. That has me rethinking the whole thing. Uh, finally, we're getting a bit of a downturn here. It looks like uh, the top print... For now, Adara, on um, RDDT is at 57.80. And now we're coming down into 54, so we're about four and a half dollars off the top there. Only a couple of five minute candles have generated so far. We only have less than 10 minutes of trading on this bad boy. When did the first print come in on this? Let me just have a look here at my side uh, chart. I'll tell you exactly when this monster opened up. It opened up at 15. Okay, so it opened right at the, the quarter hour. Now it's breaking below 54, coming into 53s. Is 50 a buy here? It's the $10 level. It's the $50 level. I mean, we got to make it down there. 53 and a half, we come down to, and 54 and a half, we just bounce right back up to. Now about 60% give or take on the day for RDDT. $34 IPO made a high of 57.80. So a lot of strength, a lot of exuberance, a lot of eyes being, um, a lot of eyes on this. Not just because it's an IPO, but it's the first social media IPO in quite some time. I don't recall when the last one was. Pinterest. I don't know if it was. Was it Pinterest? Major one. That's what Thank I was seeing. Thank you. Yeah. Right. So it's been a minute uh, since uh, since we've been on here. I don't know. If the Katina Man is now long 53s on RDDT. All right. So let, I'm praying for you, Katina Man. If you can print 55, I'll smash this desk, baby. The Katina Man has his offer out at 56.50. That's what I like to hear. There it is. We're going to spend the money for the Katina man, baby. A dollar in the money so far. 61 and a third percent. Go, Reddit, go. There it is. I mean, woo. 
Wait, I want to see, see, see this dashboard. dashboard. I want to see what everybody's in. Also, check out our dashboard at More Trigger TV Live. Look who else is long Reddit, though. Look Can we talk about this? The Ob, the one, the Kenobe is long 50s. He's long 49.97. Oh Shout out. He already is out. He's out. He's out. Okay. But still, so, oh boy. The Katina man is out. The, both of them traded. They both got a lot more guts than me, I'll tell you that. Shout out to both of them. Both of them traded. Both of them pro profitable, Obi. Obviously, because it didn't dip anywhere below that, let's just say. Um, so shout out to both of them. Very happy for both. 65% now as we pump up. Coming back into that 57 level again, Adara. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the action here, it's, it's uh, uninterrupted. Lot of action. I'm getting tired. <laughs> Yeah, this is, thank you so much for covering that um, with that exuberance um, on that tape. I think that was, I think people really appreciated that coverage and the energy you brought there. I cannot wait to hear from um, Obi and Sean and Don here about Same. those trades because, I mean, say it with me. Oh boy, that's amazing. Oh boy. That is, that is truly an amazing trade. Darwin said it in the chat there. Oh, did he? <laughs> He's yeah. like, oh boy. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the, it, it's an oh boy type of day. The Katina men took $3 on that trade. Yeah. The Katina man clap. took $3 on that trade, and I got one word for him. Dada. Yeah. How come I couldn't hear that? I didn't see it. Aw. All right. The production team has uh, the volume down. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Dada. There we go, Brendo. <laughs> he looks oh, like, I couldn't see him. Doesn't he look like RJ Scarringe a little bit he there with the like sideways hat? Huh? He's not here, so we can say it. So he has a, yeah, he, he's <laughs> he dressed up as RJ for I Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. kind of a brilliant Halloween costume because it means you don't have to dress, like do a whole costume, but you also automatically look like the person right? you're going as. Yeah, yeah, he was all about that life. Right? Um, a lot of zigzagging right now, Adara. Some red candles coming in now. It was uninterrupted green. We get a few red candles in the mix, uh, but we're holding up here, it looks like, at that 53, 54 ish, now putting in a higher low. If we dipped in to that 53, level now we're dipping into 53 and a quarter and three quarters trying to move back into 55 i'm looking at the lows to see if we're getting consecutively higher lows the trend is strong it looks like we're on our way back into 56 we just got a 55 and a half touch yet again on our ddt this is trading on the nice by the way guys make sure if you need to select your uh, your exchange you're selecting the right one but a lot of strength in reddit and well yeah this has been well received Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, absolutely. And it, we were we read the book there on Reddit. Um, I think I think someone else, I think maybe Combest Rex was making that pun as well earlier in the chat. But yeah, Reddit, what a look. Also, I'm so happy with what's happening in the Cybertruck right now, I have to say. After uh, a couple, I, I think I, I think in my brain it felt like it was more. There were really only two very short-lived, because uh, this is a three-minute chart, so these trades were less than six minutes long. Failed trades on Tesla. I got back in the Cybertruck, and I said, you know what? I like this entry. Why not do it? And I loved this area, too, because look at this area that we popped up into earlier, and we couldn't get above it. We had these wicks of, of sellers overwhelming buyers. I said, you know what, Adara? Just do it. Be like Nike, which is reporting tonight, and just do it. And I did. Uh, we took about 25 pennies. We have a piece for the dream. The dream is that 173 area. So I do not think our, our dream will come to fruition. But if it does, I do have also some beak wetters set to kind of add things to this position as well. If we break decisively above that 174.10, I'm outie. This is a scalp, a scalp situation. Honestly, I can't wait to hear what Opie and Sean have to say about their amazing trades. But also, I want to visit Rivian because we're just talking about RJ. And I am in his um, you know, competitor's trade. No, I'm joking. I'm just involved in Tesla. Honestly, this is kind of an interesting look. We have these lower highs, um, or sorry, yeah, lower highs, more or less. Then we kind of see this uh, 11.34 hold decently. The thing is, there's not enough of a range in both directions for me to kind of get interested here. But it's it's certainly a lot of stuff happening in this chart. It's not moving really in a way that I find is easy to trade. Pretty range bound, but bound within these hyper specific, pretty tight ranges. Also, uh, what there's another one I want Nike. I just mentioned actually. Let's start with Lulu first because it's still on the Nasdaq. Lulu and Nike, two athletic apparel related brands, are reporting tonight. And honestly, Lulu, why did I abandon you earlier? I love this. Look at this. We pop up into uh, four seventy eight fifty. I say abandoned. I hadn't looked at this one all day. Then we bounce off VWAP beautifully. We come back and look where we hold around that couple pennies below that one 478.50 but also we have lower highs so this could be a flat bottom break i would have a clear enough read on this either way but something around 478.50 is interesting so i shall be keeping my eyes on it also um sharif and i were talking too because it turns out apparently sharif is wearing a lulu shirt ahead of lulu earnings day 
It was not by design, I promise you. This is my only Lulu dress shirt. I have a lot of Lulu gym clothes, but with respect to actual normal wear, I have one um, like polo tee and this, and that's it. Cause it's just so expensive. And like, anytime you get it on sale, we're talking like 15, 20% max. And that's how they maintain their margins. They don't, just don't mark down stuff. Like you're gonna, you're gonna have to buy it at higher prices. All right, back to the Reddit IPO, guys. This is what we wanna cover at the moment. This is where all the exuberance is. What I see forming here on the one is a bit of a bull flag with maybe that 53 and change, 52 and change being the low end of the range. Obviously, we know what the high end of the range there is 57 and a half or thereabouts. The problem with this is, you know, if you, if you punch in 50, like let's just say you punch in right here, 54. Right, so then you could you could literally give it to the low end of the day, I think, or the low end of this range. So if you punch in 54s, it breaks 52, 75, I'd cut it, because that would be a new local low since this range started. We're getting some lower highs now, okay? So if you're looking at the one minute chart, consecutively lower high, lower high, not necessarily lower lows, though, we're at the volume weighted average price, whatever that means. I mean, we've only been trading for a few minutes. So if you want to put some stock into VWAP, 53 and a half seems to be an interesting area of support at the moment. What is concerning me is the success of lower highs. I guess that's to be expected because if people are punching in 47, 48, 49, 50, they're going to wet their beak up here, right? Like, I mean, wouldn't you? I yeah. would. I mean, I don't know what everybody's thinking, but We'll, we'll have to wait and see exactly what we get here. I'm, I'm thinking about sitting at 53s like the Katina men sat there at 53s, but I don't know if second time is going to be a charm here. So we'll have to wait and see. Here comes 53. So down into the 52, 50, sorry, 53 uh, low, uh, low 20s. All right, right back up again. So a lot of strength, a lot of volatility. It's done. How many shares now? Okay, so we're going on 17 million shares now. So the Katina man thinks VWAP at... $52 should be the level there. And I happen to tend to agree with the Katina man there because I think if I try to get a little bit too aggressive, maybe taking 54s, 50, yeah, right up, right up, man, right up into 55. I mean, talking, it looks like it's not gonna get you anywhere. There it goes, 55 and a half incoming. A uh, bit of a top there at 55 and a half. Some shy, size showing up here at that 56.50. I just saw some. 56 and two thirds. I can see it there on the book, about 250 lots or thereabouts. Some size also at 56, but 150 lots there. But we'll have to make it up there. Wow, this is crazy, crazy movements, but tightening up within a range now. Uh, we're not getting spikes like we were into 57, into 56 and a half. So the range is tightening up a little bit. Let's see how long that holds. I kind of want to range trade this. I really want to range trade this. You know what? Yeah. How I'm going to take it? really small position on this, and I'm going to range trade it. We break below 53s. I'm out. Um, I thank you for the bang, but I don't know who that was, but thank you very much. We're going to be waiting just below 54s. We're going to do 53.95. <laughs> thank you, Sean. Sean's like, yeah, it was me. So I'm, I'm thus. The reason why is because if we don't practice how to trade IPOs in the next well, exactly. Thank you so much. Sean's yeah. saying if you don't practice how to trade IPOs, you don't have the experience. And I want to shout out Sean as well because I remember when I first did the Birkenstock, what, the Birkenstock IPO was the first IPO I traded. I traded it here when we were in the midday. Yep. And I remember too, that morning I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to trade it because I'm not like an IPO trader. And Sean's like, as you're learning, you kind of want to trade everything though, right? Mm. And honestly, that Birkenstock IPO chewed me up and spit me up, but I'm still really happy I traded it because I learned something from it. And that was also very more or less a punch and pray for me was that Birkenstock IPO. This Reddit is a range I actually like, so why wouldn't I take it? And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna compromise. Uh, we're gonna wait and see what we do at 54. Uh, if we get to, I think, what was it, 54, 30, 53, 95 is where I have my point of entry. So if we get in, we get in. If we don't, we don't. But I want to try taking it because that's how you learn. I put an entry as well, 53 and a quarter. Yes. 25 is my lucky number. It we'll is. see if we get that dip trade. It's towards the bottom end of the range. May not come down there and watch. It comes down, it's going to go boom, 50 bucks right away. Down, three and a half dollars. Uh, three and a quarter dollars. We'll wait and see. DWAC is moving though, guys. So I, I negated to talk about DWAC. Sorry, I'm switched back to, uh, to, to live. So I don't have the DWAC uh, screen open. <laughs> DWAC is just on the way up to 45, it looks like. Did we get a, a 45 touch there? No, we got into 4470. 
So this one well on the way up off that 40 low, it's about almost $5 higher. Look, the volume is suspicious on DWAC, 2.6 million shares done on the day. So nothing of aggression there. Back to RDDT, here's my order sitting at 53 and a quarter. Here comes 53s. Uh, let's see if we get filled. If we do, do we bounce up or are we gonna have to flatten out here? Uh, let's see if there's any size. There's some size at 53 and a half. Uh, about how many shares there? It keeps moving. It looked like about 100 lots, 98 lots sitting at 53 and a half. Here comes 53 and three quarters. Uh, I'm looking there on the bid to see if we dip down, but a lot of a lot of action right now, right back up into 54, so we don't get printed. Somebody got printed, and she's happy and spending the money. I mean, happy is a strong word. I'm mostly just like paralyzed. <laughs> I don't even paralyzed with fear. I mean, paralyzed with like just watching this tape move. We're looking for just shy of 55s. You know me. I like to give it a couple pennies of room because I trust no stocks. So we're going to give it to Alex Sharif's nodding in a way I like that it. I like. So we uh -oh. break below that 53. I'm Audi. Let's see what we do. Do we have 54? I feel like a stock here again. 54.99. We're going to have to wait and see. Also, um, someone, and that someone is um, Adara, <laughs> forgot that they were in a Tesla short because uh, we literally were like penny shy of getting filled here. Honestly, though, we haven't made lower low or we haven't made higher highs. So I'm not leaving. I think I'm going to change my point of exit, though. We're going to do uh, 7320s. I just literally forgot I was in it, so I was like, we have to remember that. But we didn't lose anything here, to be very clear. Um, oh. This is, you know, we're, there's still a lot of... I'm long. A lot of opportunities. That you're long? You're yeah, long yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to concentrate now. Okay, so you can yeah. hang on. We, yeah, we're both. Yeah. I, it's okay. I will talk because I am in the sim still on this Reddit. But I will also pull up the Reddit chart so we can all live through uh, this trade here together. Uh, it looks like we're dipping below 53s yep, yeah. maybe. So let's, oh, we bounce right back up. Yep, okay. Yep. This is, yeah, I'm just saying things. Drew's just like saying, yeah, like we're we're locked in here, locked and loaded here. And the, oh, we bounced off VWAP. Okay, sorry, I clapped there. I got really excited. Okay. Um, I am out of the money right now because we got involved just shy of uh, 54s. But this is honestly like, I I'm so happy. And thank you again to Sean for the support there. Just saying, you don't learn unless you try to enter and try to trade, <laughs> right? And with the range that Reddit was giving you, I had no excuse but to try to hop in. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. You get what you get and you do not get upset. While I have this open, I'm going to take a look at Nike on the NY because uh, this oh, one is wow. really interesting. I got to cancel that. Yeah. Yeah, this, this Nike is really interesting. We kind of had that dip below the 90 MA, then back above, then below. This one is really bamboozling Nike as we head into earnings tonight. Nike and Lulu, the two athletic wear companies, going to be um, wow. really interesting indeed. But I think I will probably have to execrate myself from Reddit at this time. Um, I think that, yeah, Reddit is kicking me out of the chat room, so I'm going to have to say uh, goodbye <laughs> to this trade. What are you looking at? Yeah, okay, so I'll take over. Thank I, you I'm so out. Much. I lost, how much did I lose there? Uh, da, 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 52 and a quarter, and I went 52 and a quarter, and yeah, so I lost a dollar a share there. That's not that bad uh, for this trade. I'm sitting again though. I'm gonna sit here at 50 and a quarter. So if we, I'm looking to defend 50. If we make our way down into that $10 level, the $50 level, I'll look to get long again. But yeah, you know what? I couldn't let this one go against me more than a dollar. I just, you know, you gotta draw the line somewhere. So this one ends up being an L on RDDT. I'm back to live, guys. So this one is real money on the line here. We'll see if this one can make its way down to 50, defend 50, and then come back into whatever this 53 range, 53 and a half, which we had a lot of wicking in and around there. So looks like that is maybe a bit of a resistance level was support prior before that big boy Hwadunk. So we'll wait to see, number one, can we get to 50? Number two, what it does subsequent to that. With this order out there, I'm probably not going to be able to switch screens because, well, it can make its way down in a hurry and I need to be notified if I'm long. Katina, man, is there a good way other than looking at the blotter to know that you're long on a stock with if you're on a different trading screen? So say I've got my lay layout for DWAC and I get long on Reddit without looking at the blotter. Is there a way? The level. Yeah, if you look at the top, like right side of that screen. Oh, thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, good call on that. All right, thanks, Josh. I appreciate that. Shout out to Josh showing me that little trick there. Okay, so keeping eyes here. 51.50 or thereabouts, the bottom end of this trough. I want to say 51.60 or so. That that might come into play again right here. It looks like we're on our way down into 51 and a half. I'm sitting at 50 and a quarter to look to defend that $50 level. If it does come down there, we'll look get long. A lot of bamboos and a lot of craziness. This is what people are talking about here in the chat. Big 
Kyle Burdett filled at 53, sorry, 52-53 on VWAP. The top is in. Shout out to Big Kyle. Looks like he's going short. Big Kyle. Oh, Big Kyle is long Reddit. No way, Big Kyle. Wow, Reddit yeah. does impossible things. I'm joking. Shout out to you, <laughs> Kyle Burdett. That's an awesome dream. Scott H, long on Reddit, 52. Shout out to you, Scott. Hope you print. Jay Lee, be patient. You can get 55, I bet. I didn't get it on the 53 and a quarter dip, Jay, but maybe we'll get something a little bit better on that 50 defend if it does come into play. Where's the volume at right now? 20 and two thirds of a million shares. So it looks like we may easily print about 50 or so because we definitely have more time left here until four o'clock for the trade to come in. There's the new low. There goes 51.50. Here comes 51. So we're looking to see now, do we get anything in that 50 area? And if we do, do we hold above that area? Something tells me I probably will get stopped out here because there will be stop hunters uh, looking for people that have that stop just below 50. So we'll see if we get stop hunted or not. But hey, like the Katina man said, you don't take the reps. You can't expect to ever know how to do these. So we're going to take the reps. We're going to take the L's if that's what it comes down to. And that's the way it is. Here comes 50-50. Now we're below 51 Adair. Whew. Yeah, this is um, this market is something else. If we um, if we hold up, I was still gonna get involved at 51.50. Obviously, we didn't hold it then. I want to talk about my exit from this trade, though. As you can tell, we did accidentally buy bottom wicks. So that was what? a fun, you know, it worked out. But I mean, we we also uh, we lost on this, right? I just thought it was uh, kind of funny how that worked, and then we got out the second we could. The bamboozlement is real, oh, to wow. use a quote that Sharif once said about Nvidia. Um, yeah, this this Reddit. Honestly, so happy I got the opportunity to trade this. Like I always say, like honestly, I'm so happy to be interacting with these markets and Reddit. This was crazy. I remember watching the the ARM IPO and I thought that was wild. I remember again, yeah, this was when um, I think Sharif was filling in for Brendan that week, and I remember like afterwards I was at the desk and I was like, oh my gosh, I remember watching that like jump over to like 60 pennies. Like this was crazy. Oh my gosh. Also, let's let's say pamp it for Sharif and his trade. Well, hopefully, we'll pamp see. It, we'll see. Pamp it, pamp it. So uh, nice look here. This is uh, yeah. This is this is. Shout out to you. This seems like a good point of entry. We're going to see, though, what Reddit gives us. If we hold 51s, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm definitely interested. Also, we got out of Tesla. So um, I I can, uh, you know, be very happy with that. This was a bamboozling trade, and I got out here, too, because look at this area. We held this area so well for some reason. Um, really happy I didn't panic punch out of this one. But also, if we keep holding this up, I like my ranges. I might go long. Also, don't tell me now Tesla decides to break below 173. It might. We're going to have to wait and see what happens here. This, is, this has been such a fun market. I am, you know, not positive on the day. But honestly, I feel like it's been a, a positive day for me regardless because I've learned. Uh, was it kind of a pun? Yeah, but I also think it was a, a truism as well. And it's always nice when those work out. Also, yeah, this Reddit is holding so well, this point of entry. Um, so we're going to have to see there. But I will say pamp it for... <laughs> Sharif here. Sorry, I'm just gonna have to. No, talk. it's okay. Yeah. I can keep talking. Right. I'm. Yeah. I. I talk. We, we have to talk a lot here, right? So we're all good there. <laughs> AMD. Uh, this is the one-minute chart. Let's switch to the three-minute. Shout out to Joanna Brewster. I believe I remember seeing in the chat that she got out of here around the same time I did, right before I began the round three of her lesson. We broke below that 181.40s. Had a couple negative trades in this name. Honestly, though, my only positive name here because the, there was a little bit more of this positivity. What? What? Oh, nice, Sean and Sharif, trade um, trade twins there. <laughs> so shout out to uh, both Sean and Sharif. Yeah, this AMD a little bit too wild for me on these wicks. I can't read. It's like doji after doji after doji, but it looks like we could be trying to recover, make a move back up here. But you know what? I don't have a read yet. So let's see. Let's wait and see what's going to occur. Also, Eli Lilly, someone said earlier Lilly looks beautiful. Let's see how beautiful she looks. I know she had a positive catalyst. She's above, oh. I neglected her. Look at this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful trade. Uh, I say trade. I wasn't in it. This is what made me nervous, though, this dip below the 9 EMA, oh, wow. which is why I didn't get involved. Then we come back, and we and we just dance it beautifully. This is a or dance above it beautifully. This is a really nice trade. I Let's be it. aware, though, for these dojis, um, because who knows what will occur. Also, yeah, Reddit. Uh, nope. Re looks like Reddit fell. 0 for 2. 0 for, 0 for 2. And I fat fingered, so I actually had twice the shares there. Got long 50 and a quarter, then got long 50 50. I was trying to actually put an order out for 51. So that's it. Look, I. I I want to trade it. I want to try, but now red on the day because of RDDT. But that's the way it is. You got to take these reps. Let's see what we get at 47. We opened up 47, Katina. I had to flatten out there uh, for uh, for a bit of a loser. Well, not a bit of a loser. That was another dollar loser. So two dollar losers 
on our DDT for me today. But look, you don't try if you don't you don't get it unless you try. We took we took the reps and obviously I didn't want to participate in that initial move, but maybe that was the best move, that initial open. And that's what I was talking to Katina Man about. He was like, look, man, I'm just gonna punch long. Right at the beginning, he tried to get 50s. I think that was the best move uh, for this type of trade because it's kind of like you shaping down on the way. So lots of uh, lots of interesting stuff today, but I got the reps in and I learned a little bit, so we'll see if we can maybe improve a little bit next time on RDDT. Looks like it wants to come back into 50 bucks here as we move up a little bit uh, back into that $50 area. Big Kyle taking way too much risk here, you and I both, bro. But uh, shout out to Kyle, I hope you print. I don't know if you're DCAing or what's going on on that side of things, but I'm, I hope, I'm, I'm rooting for you, Kyle, like I always am. I'm always rooting for everybody in the chat. I never want anybody in the chat to lose money. I never want anybody around me to lose money because good juju seems to find its way to you if it's around you. So uh, shout out to everybody. I hope y'all are, are doing well. Yoel Reyna, have you ever seen a new IPO or do, th do this, then explode the next day or next week? I can't recall exactly, to be honest with you. Um, what was the biggest IPO I've witnessed so far? I'm having trouble remembering. I think it's probably a pandemic during the pandemic. I'm not sure exactly which one. I'll have to go back and look, but I don't know exactly uh, offhand which one it was. Scott H., I'm reloaded RDTT. Let's do this. Shout out to Scott. I hope you kill it. Kill it for me because I couldn't do it. Kyle Burdett, I got no clue what to do with this long. Down is usually good for me. Yeah, I hear you, brother. Um, shout out to you as well. Uh, Jay Lee, Arm did that. Yeah, Arm, Arm, that was a sick IPO. Why am I not remembering that? But I'm thinking there was probably more liquid uh, IPOs during the pandemic because there were so many IPOs in 2021. I'm just forgetting really most of them here. People are talking about Carvana? Really? No, oh, Carvana is wow. at VWAP. Wow. What's up, Katina Man? Right above 50 we go again. There we go. Uh, up Ooh. into that 50, 80-ish area. Now right back down to 50 and down in the 49s. The bamboozlement is real. It is fast. It's furious. 24 million shares. We're about to hit 25 million shares on the day for this IPO. The biggest, I'd say, probably in a little while. I don't know. Probably won't outdo ARM, I'm assuming. But we'll have to look back up ARM IPO and see how many shares it did on the day. But Definitely bigger than Birkenstock or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, Birkenstock was, yeah, it didn't really work in stock, did it? I mean, my <laughs> trade, it certainly didn't. I think it was a bit of a weaker IPO from my understanding. Clavio was also not not too much no. happening there. That was a little. No. But, yeah, that, that Birkenstock was quite something. Also, I am long. Uh, we went back to old patterns. I made that sound uh, worse than it is. I do still like the idea of this trade. We went to Eli Lilly. And, okay, why? I'm just This ticker does not want me to type it. That's cool. There we go. Thank you, computer. Eli Lilly. We got long here because I like this kind of... Apple's um, tanking. Lower highs, higher lows. Let's see what's happening in Apple, though. 4% now. Oh, my gosh. Seriously? Apple, what are you doing? Oh, everything just fell. Eli Lilly just fell. Okay, we're going to have to deal with you, Lilly. Um, okay, so um, Tim Cook is going to meet with she. I don't... I, that would not sell this off. It looks like she's going to meet with a, a lot of the big tech IPOs next week. Uh, IPOs, get it together, Shave. A lot of the big tech CEOs. Looks like he's going to meet with Apple CEO, HSBC, AMD. Tesla's tanking too. Yeah, Tesla on the way down. Apple on the way down. Meta on the way down. Not so for softy. Uh, kind of NVIDIA on the way down as well. So we're getting big moves in Meta. Here, let me just show you. Big moves in Meta on the way down. You're getting big moves, in, well, bigger-ish moves on the way down for Apple. Tesla as well. Not so much NVIDIA. We're still locked into that kind of range. We broke below 8650, that 50-point level. We're also below the volume-weighted average price. We're still up 0.89 on the day on the NQ. Google, dead money, dead weight today. Amazon, kind of the same thing. They're not really moving. So this is the, uh, this is the headline that just came in with she right now. Uh, Blackstone. HSBC, Apple, um, Exxon, AMD, Micron, and Pfizer going to meet with Xi, it looks like, next week. Uh, Government-sponsored forum in China, okay, seeks to assuage American companies. It's not the co American companies you need to assuage, bro. It's the American government. Wrong one. Should be meeting with them. 
Uh, all right, so that's, uh, that's the headline there. I'm not sure. Sur- Who is she? Xi Jinping, my man. Sal Ji, the president of China? <laughs> all right. That's all right. Maybe not everybody knows who he is. That's fine. Uh, Xi Jinping is who I'm talking about. All right, right back above 50. Here we go with Reddit. Could we see 51s? Could we start curling here, Adira? I mean, it looks like we put in a temporary bottom around that 48 and a half, a smidge above 48, and we're putting a couple of candles here, putting in higher lows. Not necessarily, you know, the higher highs you want to see, but definitely the higher lows. Could we be curling here? That's the question as we dance at 50. I mean, I hope we're curling because I did want to get long here. I wait, we didn't get filled right away. I waited. I was patient. We got involved. If we break kind of below these 48s here, I'm out. I'm going to give this a little bit of room. But I have enough for um, two beak wetters. They're not going to be super substantial. So let's see what happens here. Um, we're going to, we're going to, you know, you, you have to try things. I know someone earlier was saying, too, like we were saying you live and you learn. And they're like, what was learned? I think sometimes what's learned is like confidence. It's just having the confidence to go for the Boom. trade, having an idea and committing to it. And when it doesn't work, you leave. Because I think sometimes, too, and this is one thing I'm learning, sometimes it takes uh, it takes guts and it kind of takes um, understanding and planning to know <laughs> to know when to leave a trade, too. And so that, that's what sometimes has to happen. So I, I hope that makes sense. Uh, just someone who's very new to trading and who's still in the sim and learning, trying to, trying to explain that. But I, I want to build on, on that, that point, too, because you have do. a really good point. Remember that story that I told you where I almost got fired? Yeah. Yeah. So I was sitting right where uh, uh, BPI was sitting, right there. Shout out to BPI. So it was that trade that I was, like, staring like a deer in the headlights, almost. Like, I didn't really kind of make, okay, it'll go back up. And then you keep telling yourself that it'll adjust. And it just keeps going, da, 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 right? And then it's just like, so you learn your lesson from that, that it's not going to go your way, typically, yeah. and to flatten out the trade. So you end up giving away, g- taking one bad feeling to make up for a worse feeling that would come if you let it go all the way. Right, so. yeah, it's hard. It's a weird, it's a really weird feeling. Um, and yeah, I, I think I totally understand. It's also, I can't, we're out of Reddit. We're out of Reddit. I just want to talk about this story. I'm going to... Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, so the plan for this trade was I liked watching. Pamp it. Thank you so much for the button there and pamp it. Pamp it. Reef. Um, I liked, I was watching for these wicks, these filled wicks to the downside. I was watching this hold. I was, we didn't get filled the first time around 49.50, so I waited. I said, you know what, Adara? Let it come back. If it nice. breaks below 48, you get out. It didn't break below 49. I'm really happy with how this worked. We took out some around 50.25. We saved a piece of the dream. Where did we get out here? Was it? Yeah, it was 50.75. We got out for the rest of it. So a bit over a dollar in the sim. And I, I'm really happy I went for it because sometimes the market chews you up and you have to say, no market, my turn to stand <laughs> up. Um, maybe don't say it like that, but you just have to get back up. And so thank you so much for sharing your story there. Yeah, no and problem. And I also want to say too, when Sharif says he wishes everybody good juju, he does mean I it. I really do mean it. He was it. literally saying that earlier today as well, like he wants the good juju. And I even remember a couple days ago, I made some joke about getting IW massacred in my IWM trade. Yeah. And Sharif laughed and then he's like, oh, I feel badly for laughing because it's a losing trade. So it's like, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, I, I'm so happy to be here on the How to Trade. Mm. And we, I, I really do appreciate all of the good vibes from uh, Sharif, uh, Neil, I'm Sean, with everybody in there. for that trade. Now, you, you so there, are those two beak wetters? They are. Jeez, they are. I like it. Okay, okay. We were a little bit frisky with it. We were really clearly. I like right? it. All right, here comes fifty again, Adara. As we come into that fifty and a quarter, do we hold fifty this time? I mean, or is this a dead cat bounce where we kind of put in a few green candles here, only to make that flat bottom break through forty-eight and a half, forty-eight? or thereabouts, uh, we'll see. I mean, uh, a lot of zigzagging here to the high side and the downside here on RDDT. Now, t- the volume's slowing down a little bit now, guys, okay? So we just talked about, you know, we were at, I think, 24 million shares. That was about five minutes ago. If I had done that at the start, we would be at 15. Now we're at 26 and change. So looks like the volume cooling down a little bit over here, but the price action, you know, well, the price action is cooling off a little bit as well. Now we're getting dollar ranges instead of $5 ranges. So RDDT, still tradable, up still 48% on the day. Big premium to where the actual IPO took place, which was $34. That was more insider buying the actual opening print on the day. Looks like it was an even 47 bucks on the dot. We'll have to see where this one ends up at 4 o'clock. We'll see with the closing print about two hours and seven minutes right now. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this is, um, yeah, shout out to Niall Hato as well in the chat saying took um, 
49.53 to 50, first IPO. Congrats to you. We're, we're here, like, cheering everybody on here, right? Yes, this, that's what's great about this community. Um, everyone's going to have their own style of Also, shout out to Kyle Burdett taking this long. Big that, Kyle that's Burdett. A, oh, sorry. Big. I apologize. Big Kyle <laughs> Burdett. Um, but honestly, in all seriousness, shout out to you. And also, yeah, Kyle Burdett also helping me try to short the spy earlier as well. So I really do appreciate all the insight. Everyone come in here from different perspectives and, and always sharing what they have to offer. So, yeah, thank you. I appreciate the support in the chat. Always happy to be here. Yeah, Kyle also saying big at the bottom there, so my <laughs> apologies. But also, thank you so much to Ahmed Amwala for the 729 AED Super Chat. Apple, nice for CSP in my opinion. Let's it's take going a look here. Here we go. At Apple. We're moving. Oh, Red is, We're moving. Red 52, is rising. 52 incoming. Oh my gosh. The Katina Man is long 48. Whew. 48.36, yeah, well, you know, Katina, man, when you're moving dollars at a time, 36 pennies, you know, negligible in this case, but sorry to interrupt you, Dad, That's I did everybody. No, it's okay, yeah, I think Apple looks like a bit like a flat bottom break here, we had that 170, area, then we fell below with uh, quite a viciousness, let's look at the daily on this, I know, I know Sharif has been looking at the daily on this, because I know you had your dip buys mm. in Apple, um, yeah, Apple, honestly, like, we did have that really nice little peel, and honestly, if you want to, like, zoom back even further, we did have technically a higher low. We kind of get to this uh, 166 area, then we come back to about 168. And we haven't eclipsed, so we haven't gone back below that 168 area. So we're going to have to wait and see what we do here on Apple in the longer term. On the day, though, it looks like a really nice flat bottom break. This one has been a little bit harder to read, though, and a bit bamboozling for sure has um, Apple been. I know this earlier, this chop and turn had me a little bit confused. I was like, could it be a long? And Apple was like, no, it's not a long. Continuing to the downside. Uh, so I, I didn't try trading it just because I wanted to wait for confirmation there. But yeah, this is, what a market. I have no words. Yeah. I am so happy we got to, to bring this to everybody today and hopefully you guys got some entertainment out of it some lessons some trading it feels like both 20 minutes and five hours all in one a little hour bit session. right especially this reddit trade here as it makes its way right back up into that 5150 i did have a dip trade as a third i guess third time it may have been a charm i was sitting at 50 and a quarter so i took it out because i was like uh I want to take a third L on this one. So maybe I should have left that one because that one would have actually made money. That, that's a, a lesson in commitment right there. So keeping eyes on this name. Um, Ian Respeto, my man, $5 Super Chat, $4.99 to be exact. Can you guys look at Lulu earnings today at the bell? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Let's bring in the chart on Lululemon. Just remember, last time earnings was not so good. They did talk a little bit about uh, weakness last time around. I'm talking about uh, Lulu's earnings last time. But for the most part, when there have been uh, times where the consumer has been crunched, whether with whatever, uh, with respect to uh, you know interest rates or... Uh, any other issue, they seem to do well, a lot better than, say, Foot Locker or, or um, uh, what's it called, Nike and some other players as well that are in the same space. They seem to have pricing power in a way that those guys don't. Now, let's look at the technicals. So where are we at right here uh, in terms of the top? Let me just show you where the last earnings was. That was October. You could tell by the candle over here. This was the earnings. And yeah, we did sell off a little bit after. So we dipped about, oh, 9% to the bottom there. That's not too bad. All right, so technicals. 440, double bottom. 445, thereabouts, double bottom. Uh, was kind of a bit of a pullback right off that making of, a, of an all-time high of $517. We kind of retrace a little bit, holding up. At around 450 or thereabouts, the wicks come below 450, but most of the closing prints are in around 450. Now curling back up through 480. So resistance, you know, I'm going to say obviously that 500 level will be resistance. Then obviously the the high side will be re, the, the all-time high. Excuse me, will be resistance as well at that 1515. Uh, the other area to keep your eye on is 430. Look how many touches here we had at the 200 period. That's the blue solid line on my chart. It has a history going back the year and a half of holding up at the 200 period. So if we do make it down, if we do sell off, look for support at 430 bucks. Okay. Now it may not hold it to the T. Like look over here. This is another earnings date over here. We dip below it initially, but look where the closing print is back on June 1st of 2023, right at that 200 period. Yet again, we do that over here. And so 
This has a history of holding at the 200 period as of late. So keep your eye on 430. If we miss, if the high side, if we, if we beat, I don't want to say it's a blue sky setup, but we're awfully close to, to all time highs on Lulu. Uh, we'll see how they do, but you know, anybody who goes in that store, especially on the weekends, kind of has like that Costco effect. Yeah. Where you're like overwhelmed by the like the masses of people and like you think to yourself, how can this company do any wrong? Right? right? Like, yeah, yeah, no, they I have a I was saying I have a friend who works there too and they treat their employees really well as well. So she nice. had lots of really positive things to say as well. They they let them do like workout classes and stuff for group uh -huh. workouts too. Yeah, honestly, um we'll have to wait and see how those earnings go. I think okay. it'll be really interesting either way. And I think It'll be really interesting to compare their earnings, at least mentally, to what Nike does. Right. Because they're both these two sports companies. We also have FedEx tonight, too, so FDX. Let's take a look at that, see what kind of earnings they deliver, uh, pun intended. Because last time, it was a bit rough, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, here we go. Here was last time FedEx reported earnings. So I think it'll be really interesting to see what can they do here. They did fill that gap from their earnings drop, but can we get back to where we were earlier? Can we get back to that previous Acme, that peak of 282? We'll have to find out tomorrow though, because, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I wanna I want to give one more thing yes. for the Reddit people. So I did not have the volume weighted average price on my chart, Ram Ram, uh, but I wanna show something over here. So there's clearly resistance here to the high side at the volume weighted average price. And that's one thing I, did, I negated to do. I didn't put that up on my chart, but here you go. The white line VWAP reject over here. And then again and again. So VWAP acting as a resistance level ever since getting broken. If it clears VWAP, look it for his support. Thank you. Yeah, so they appreciate that. Uh, so we will see you tomorrow with Reddit updates, FedEx updates, whatever else you want. Same bat time, same bat channel. For now, though, Brendan's at the desk. Hey guys, yeah, two hours left on uh, quite an exciting afternoon here as far as the market is concerned. Accelerating downside currently for the futures. We're not yet. 